Hello and welcome to the Nash Tackle Off The Hook podcast. Just to make you aware, this podcast may contain some explicit slash offensive language. And if that's not your thing, you don't have to listen. But I have given you a warning. I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. You don't know the half of it, but yeah, um, I'm anyway. Time, yeah, I'm, good, on, mate. I'm skating on the thinnest <laughs> ice known to man. Like. He said, and um, they put a poison in the tank that just instantly kills them. He went, and we've run out of it, so we cut their heads off with shovels. Suddenly, bang! The whole boat exploded. Take your sort of eight-inch-long piranha and imagine that at four, five, maybe six feet. I said, I've revived your dead fish. <laughs> F off, he said. You haven't. That was just humongous. It was... I couldn't believe what I was looking at. I'm just battling this fish out and on. I know it's a black man. I'm, yeah. I'm saying I'll never be a naughty boy again. If you catch fish and you return them to the water, then you are my brother. Dave Little, welcome to the Nash Podcast, mate. How are you? I'm good. Thank you very much. It's a bit cold in here, but it's, yeah, I'm doing all right. <laughs> it's coming on the day that the heating is packed yeah. up. We've had a little heater on. We've had to turn it off because it's whirring in the background. But the most important thing, mate... Yeah is that you're here. I massively Made appreciate it. you coming down. No problem. How have you been recently, mate? Well, good. Really good, yeah. Really what have you been up to? Uh, what have I been up to? This year, Wallpack. Fishing every week, which has been fantastic. <laughs> yes, mate. <laughs> yeah. Weekends in the tackle shop and fishing every week. That's always been. It's been terrible. <laughs> Sounds like the absolute dream, yeah. mate. You've caught a few as well, haven't you? Done all right this year, yeah. Last year was hard, but this year, yeah, they've been uh, dropping into place, yeah. Lovely old times. <clears throat> We've got loads to talk about. We've got everything from river chapters, which I'm really interested in talking about, especially the river stuff yeah. on the ooze. People who follow you on Instagram, ooze pirate. Some of the pictures on there of some of those fish are incredible. Plus St. Ives and many, many more chapters in terms of your fishing, mate. Yeah. I want to start for you where where sort of you started geographically. Because where you are now yeah. and where you were born are two different places, isn't they? Indeed, yes. Talk to me about the start and where, where the sort of carp fishing slash fishing bug sort of gripped you. Um, I was born in Wellingarn City, uh, famous for the Cracker Factory, Stanford Lakes, and the River Lee. So they were the closest waters uh, growing up. Um, I had a dad that was fishing mad as well. He was into fly fishing and roach fishing. He loved his roach fishing. Um, Probably more his fly fishing because that ended up dragging me all around the country when I was a kid because all he wanted to do was fish for salmon. Yeah. Yeah. So all over the country, I I was going fishing with him when I was younger. We ended up, all our school holidays were in a camper van driven up to Scotland and mum had to put up with me and my sister well, off he went and fished the river. So, yeah, it was, I had a fishing background installed in me right from the very start. Um, he and my mum my also had a static home on the River Ouse. So that's how I probably got in the area because we'd go every weekend and stay at the static home. Um, the river was right on the doorstep. We'd fish uh, for bream and chub and all sorts um so yeah that got me into the night fishing as well which i love being a kid yeah you you ain't got to go to bed now you can stay up past half past nine and you can fish the river all night which was fantastic um back in wellington city though uh the cart fishing was probably uh the, the first steps into it was my good friend shane who i grew up with his dad owned lakeside tackle and bait which was a mobile tackle shop Okay. That was right by uh, Stanborough Lakes. <clears throat> oh, yeah. And uh, I remember Shane had all the gear. He had like top rods, Abu reels, uh, optonics. I didn't even have optonics. I was fishing with like uh, monkey climbers or whatever I could use back in the day. Um, he, his dad also owned Holwell Hyde Lake. So we was going down fishing there at about 10 years age, fishing for carp back then. Um, yeah, it was great fun being left alone, didn't have to pay for the ticket. Perfect. Night fishing. So this is kind of mid eighties. Um, and as you know, cracker factory that was renowned for the 20 pound cart. Well, the whole world hide had twenties in. So we were just kids catching 20 pounders back Jeez, then. They're big. Fish, yeah, it was great. They? It was great. Yeah. Your first 20 from there. Yeah. 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 I think I was 12 when I caught my first How 20. How were you fishing for them? Oh, cracky. Yeah. Um, back run. Yeah. Lunch and meat. And hemp. So it was sea fishing bead, Aussie bomb, running lead, Dacron, and um, yeah, we, we didn't realize. But like, 
to keep the luncheon meat on, you push your hook through, twist it, and put a bit of backing on. Yeah. So we probably lost more carp than what we got. <laughs> <laughs> we was only kids we didn't know you know we, we didn't know about the hair rig we didn't know about like boilies or anything like that um yeah i remember shane was like quite a deep sleeper and i was used to because i fished the river when i was a kid i had a float rod with, with, with me as well and i had it set up with the old uh, starlight yeah and i used to fish that in the edge and i used to catch lows in the edge that that used to be the best way down there in the end it was you know get them in the edge get them feeding on the hen and just drop a lump of lunch of meat in <clears throat> i can remember still to this day you know watching the sun go down then fishing till the sun comes up and we had like a little boom box just listening to bob marley we had, no yeah way. we had like brollies that were t- too small for us it was the old sun lounger chairs what you'd have the float out all night as yeah well. i'd just sit there all night just watching the starlight yeah yeah bob under another cart Another car. Yeah. Shame you'd be asleep waiting for the oxalics to go. But yeah, I'd be active. I'd be fishing all night. Yeah, I was mad for it. Yeah. It's interesting that you went down the sort of carp route, with, especially with your dad being so sort of salmon heavy. You'd think that that maybe would sway you down the old fluff chucking dark art. Yeah, th- there was a thing about the hide. Um, excuse me. Although it was a carp fishing lake, um, if you caught a tench, it was like, like the. Um, it was, it was more worthy than the carp as such. Ah. So back then, it hasn't got it now, but it used to be like wee beds, lily pad beds. And all we'd do is just fish like lift method over the lily pads. And if you caught a tench, you were a bit of a hero sort of thing. Because no one really caught the tench down there. Okay. Everyone came down to carp fish. Um, and I think I, I really enjoyed catching the tench. Um, yeah. And so what? this is how I actually got into the river carping. Um when we were 16, we, my dad bought an old farmhouse to do up. He's a plumber and builder all his life. And we moved from Welling Garden, just down the road from the river, from a stat, the static home. Yeah. And um, I'd, I'd gone from a small gravel pit to having miles and miles of river. The Great River Ouse is 147 miles long. Is it that long? Yeah. And up and down that valley is just dug pits everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Literally where our house was, there was... There must be like 50 acre lake in front, 50 acre lake behind and up and down the valley. There's tons of, la- tons of, tons of lakes. <clears throat> My throat, sorry, bud. Um, yeah. So basically this whole tench catching thing led me to go in search on the river for tench. So oh, sort of 17, 18 now, and I'm dressed up. Chris Yates, we talked about this earlier. Yeah, yeah. I've just done a passion for angling. So I'm dressed up with me. Uh, split cane and centre pin and I've sent you a photo it's still the same cane full Yatesy yeah of, yeah. so I'm out there wandering the rivers and it was just basically looking for slow moving parts of the river and looking for like lily padded sections in those slower backwater moving parts of the river yep I didn't know it at the time um, but I'm dragging the swim as you do and so we, you're raking it, are you? Raking it, yeah, yeah, yeah. getting it all prepped and ready. Um, we used to use wheat back then. We used to put Rod Hutchinson's maple essence on sort of wheat. So it's a real good carpet, cheap feed bait to use. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'm baiting it up a couple of weeks, you bait it up for as you did back then, and going to fish it. And I was up there, split cane, lift method, <clears throat> half a lobworm. Yeah. Lo and behold, I caught a river carp of about 19 pounds. Now, I, I had caught river carp from the Lee and um, obviously the lakes in Welling Garden, but I, I wasn't expecting to catch river carp out of the river. You hadn't caught them to 19 pounds, did you? That's a big old yeah, I was fish. Yeah, I was 19 and I caught a 19 pounder. That's, that's, so that's my first ever uh, river carp from uh, the Great River Roof. That was a, a common as well, but it was like one of them old wildy ones. It was like, Real dark coloured, overslung mouth, black in the mouth. It looks like I'd never been caught before. So that I think that was my first taste of the actual river carp, and that was my first ever river carp. Yeah, that's mate, that's mega to go up there tench fishing and catch yourself a yeah, yeah, yeah was, a river carp. Yeah. Do you think that the also the the sort of pull of the river, obviously the there's geography and the way that you guys have moved to where you've moved to, and and the use is there, but also 
spending so much time as a kid with your dad on those Scottish rivers, that the draw of that running water element, would you reckon that was a, a sort of a factor as well in terms of why you didn't go and fish the pits and yeah, chose the river? Still to this day, I love the river more than I love the lakes, definitely. There's something about, you know, the, the, the flow of the river. It changes every year with the seasons, it changes. It, it always looks different. It's just a, a constantly changing, growing thing. It's just, yeah, I, 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 yeah I'm in love with the river. I, I live on the river. You do, don't yeah. you, mate? So, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's my home. Yeah, it's great. You're angling on there. Obviously, <laughs> initially, you've gone there on a quest for tench. You've caught yourself a carp. Yeah. Your life, your sort of moving, your work, how did things factor in, in and around the angling that you were going to then pursue carp-wise? Or, or was it always just tench for a fair bit of time? Um, I think just because we fished the hard as kids and we fished it for God, years, you know, um, my mum used to ground me if I was out late and, and like nine o'clock so that I could go night fishing and stay out with my mates all night. And, you know, we, all through the school holidays, we'd go fishing and we'd be down there catching, drinking bottles of ciders, getting into trouble, you know, that kind of, <laughs> yeah. that kind of childhood. It was great. Um, and I just think with that much carp fishing in my younger years, when I walked onto the river and I, after watching Yates Wilson on, t on TV and stuff like that, it gave me a perspective that I don't just have to fish for carp. I didn't, I don't, my dad dragged me out fly fishing. The first time he ever dragged me to Grafham, I was nine years old. Right. And you shouldn't go on there till you're 16, I think. Okay. And <laughs> dad, you know, the big long barber jacket, he put one of them on on me and it was literally to the floor because I was so, so small, big hat on and the big, big glasses back then. They weren't before the Fox ones, the big black, like, right. uh, Polaroid glasses. And I remember being out there, April booby fishing for, and it weren't as a young lad, it's not nice. So you're out there, the waves, the cold, the, your yes. freeze barber jackets aren't the one, you know, when you're out ah. there, <laughs> give me a fortress jacket every day. And, um, these trout I was catching, I couldn't cast it. I just have to let the, a line go out behind, behind the boat, pad out. Okay. So the ones I were catching, they'd pull me in. I couldn't even reel them in. I was that young, trying to catch trout. Yeah. <laughs> he was laughing as well, just like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Dad, Dad, what's going on? Yeah. I mean, he was that bad. Um, probably about around the same age, the pits opposite where, where we moved to. Yeah. Before we had moved up there. Again, I'm only nine, ten. I think it was old Vauxhall Chevette. This is, we're going back now. Yeah, he let me drive the Vauxhall Chevette, which I must crash down one of the lanes. What? And we were pike fishing on one of these pits. Um, you know, this is my earliest, earliest memories here. And I remember he's he's caught one and he's passed it to me. And I'm only a little lad, eight, nine years old, and I'm reeling it in. And it beached itself. It was a 20-pound pike with its mouth open. Jesus. I'm so scared. Yeah. I'm only a little lad, I'm so scared. That's a great white shark, mate. <laughs> yeah. This is how bad my dad was to calm my nerves. He was like, do you know what medicated snuff is? No, what's that? Medicated snuff is like what uh, sailors used to take to clear their nose. And you've got a little snuff pot naturally in your in your, in your your thumb when you lift it up there. So you went, here, son, try this. So I sniffed some <laughs> snuff. And I'm eight, nine years old. My eyes are watering like anything. Oh, dad, dad, what you done like that? And he gave me a bottle of rum. He said, here, I'll take this. <laughs> Lamb's Navy rum, so I'm like, my throat's killing me, my eyes are crying. That they were like my earliest experience of. of Mate, you fishing. were a pirate from young. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you're on the room and the stuff. Incredible. Yeah, I had mate. no chance there. Yeah, there you go. I love the fact that your dad's that committed to fishing, though. You're coming along, aren't you? Fly fishing. He's in. he's climbed up Welsh mountains to catch brown trout off the top. I wouldn't do it. I just can't wow. get my every, like little brownies top of a Welsh mountain now. I'm not going to waste my time for that. Oh, yeah, fair yeah. play. Yeah, he was mad angler. Mad angler. <laughs> mad angler. Right. The 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 pull of that river. Well, you talked about before. <clears throat> that being the sort of multi-species element, the influence of Yatesy, the influence a bit of John Wilson on telly, and yeah. that whole, that was quite river-centred a lot of that as well. Yeah. Passion for Angler, I remember that on the river. Yeah. But that multi-species element and that, that angler, that all-round mm. angler element being in there for a long time. Mm. For you, that, that, that sort of first escapades river fishing, was it always sort of multi-species based? Yeah. When did the first sort of <clears throat> just carp influence came in on that river? Um through my mid-20s I had a plumbing uh, and heating business I was you know I had guys working for me my own um, vans um, I got married um, and I think it was that whole sort of remember the underwater videos 
that was like an eye opener. So I'd done a lot of carp mm-hmm. fishing and, you know, I think carp fishing became trendy, like with these underwater videos. Came um, more mainstream, didn't it? Yeah. I, uh, I'd read a lot about it, like Paisley and the old Yates books and stuff like that. But now we're watching them on DVDs, aren't we? So now I've got it in my face. And I'm thinking, well, yeah, I do that. I've done that. I've caught carp like that. I know how to fish like that. And now I'm watching it every evening uh, before I go to bed and I'm back to work in the morning. I've got a business to run. Yeah. So I'm, I'm literally working about six days a week to run a plumbing and heating business, keep, keep the lads in, in check and make sure they get paid every week. I was married. Um, I've got a mortgage. Um, I'm, I, you know, I'm squashed in there. I can't go fishing. Um, but I did manage to find a relief, Oakwood Angling in Wellingarn City. We'd stop there for lunch. So we'd always get in there for lunch, and I ended up having a massive credit bill in there. Yeah. And Optonics, <laughs> Terry and Rods, you know, it got it got terrible. But I weren't going I wasn't going fishing. Yeah. I had all the gear, but I didn't have the time to go fishing. But it was that substitute. The gear and stuff was a substitute for actually instead of going, definitely, you yeah. get your fix there. Got my kick there, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um I I started pushing the boat out a bit. And on what I'd do, I'd get one of the lads to come and pick me up on a Monday morning, a little bit later. So we'd start a little bit later. And every Sunday, I'd go fishing Sunday night. So that'd be my night. I'd have one night a week to go fishing. Okay. Um, so, yeah, through my mid-20s, that's what I'd do. And Where would that night be? That would be... <laughs> it'd be massive pits in Cambridgeshire. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like... Could Easy. It, yeah. It's an absolute gimme. Yeah. I think I'd done 25 Sunday nights before one of my first bites on oh. one of, on the Buckton pit, the old Buckton pit. Uh, telling Jacko made a, yeah. a video. Yeah, yeah I remember. Big, telling Jacko big carpet, big wasn't it? Yeah. So I was doing every Sunday night, travelling all the way up there, and then getting one of the lads to like meet me and off, to, off we go to work sort of thing, yeah. Yeah, and that, that was hardcore. That was like, I didn't give myself the best chances. And I knew that. And I, I was a good enough angler, I believe, back then to know that, you know, but I, I stuck it out and I got my first bite. And that it, must be some buzz, that first yeah, bite. Yeah, it was a proper one as well, you know. So uh, it's just one of them old cams, commons. It's just, yeah, it was special. Yeah. Meant the world to me. It wasn't a big one, but it meant the world to me because it was so much effort going in. And it's a fix, mate, after that time of not doing yeah. it. Yeah. From doing that, um, I made a little bit more time for myself and I went and fished Emberton Park. Okay. My dad used to drag me there when I was younger and used to tench fish and a lot of his mates um, would fish it as well. And I started really putting weekends into effort, into fishing it sort of thing, all through April. And, uh, the clo- That was when they... The close season went. Yeah, that's, yeah, 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 that's yeah. it, right. So we could start fishing it. So that gave me time to go and fish. But I, I turned up then purposely fishing for carp. And I was catching massive tench while well, they're catching uh, average tench. And then I'd start catching the carp in there. And no one really fished for the carp in those lakes back then. And I had some stunning carp because the river's right next door. Yeah. So it flooded in, flooded out all the time. Um, I fished the, the ones that weren't classed as carp lakes first. And then the big one, which was classed as a carp lake, I started fishing on there. And I started hammering it. And there was a big one in there as well which was going to be a PB for me back then, which was a 30 pound common. Wow. Um, stuck it out, really, really put in. How were you fishing? Were you baiting it regularly or were you just going down a fishing weekend? Being here, it's funny. I was actually, I phoned, I was messaging Basie. Yeah. Yeah. And he said about the banana oil palantin. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking as a young lad, you're like, yeah, I've got to get on this to get this bait and this, the fish will love this. And Basie's gave me this. So I was, putting banana oil palette and he said something else which I can't remember and so my hook baits were already for that sort of thing and we had the scopex squid back then right so I was baiting with scopex squid using the banana oil palette and, and they started coming I had about three fish on the run up to one of the oldest ugliest fish in there called the amphibian yeah which was alright but I was a bit gutted I caught the ugliest fish in there and then basically I went back the following week um, fished the area again and I caught my first ever 30 pound common no way. Yeah. Yeah. And this is great. This bit. I'm soaking wet. So I must have had it about five o'clock in the morning. And I phoned up my dad because I didn't have a camera. And I said, can you come and take the pictures for me? And he was like, no, I'm not kidding. I was like, it's a 30 pound common, man. Come and sort it out, dad. Come and take the pictures for me. Yeah. And he got the right arm and hung up on me. So I was like, what am I going to do? Anyway, while I'm trying to sort out pictures for, for that fish, I had another one. 
So now I've got one in a sack and I haven't got a spare sack. So I've got one in the net, one in a sack. And there were two fellas on the, on the opposite bank. I had to run around barefoot in the middle of the night. Where's the fish? What did they with the fish? One's in a net, one's in a sack. Okay. I had to go and pinch a sack off the guys on the opposite side of the lake, run all the way back. And I, I asked them, is there anywhere I can get a, like, it was back then, it was the old disposable. Yep. So I had to drive about half an hour out the road to get a camera to, to, to take the pictures. So yeah, I got two fish in a lot. Oh, they'll never let me on back on Everton Park now now I've told this story. <laughs> I came back with, I brought two, just in case. Just in case you met, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the film, you had to get the film developed, yeah. so I brought two. Uh, I then had to get one of the plugs on the opposite side to come round and take the pictures. Done all the pictures, and this is when I had my plumbing business, and I was gone by like half eight in the morning because I had work. About half an hour later, my dad phoned me up. I went, where are you? Oh, he didn't come to <laughs> bless like you. an hour and a half to come again. And you'd gone? I'd gone to work, yeah, yeah. That's brutal. <laughs> what, a, what a lad your dad is, though. Yeah, he did come out. Yeah, fair play. He didn't make it clear enough at the time. He was too stroppy. But I suppose if someone phoned me at half five in the morning, I'd be stroppy as well. Oh, yeah. I don't have to pick it up. <laughs> um, but you'd had, a, so you'd had a fair good old hit of fish, banana oil pound that you said. Yeah, How you cheers, thinking? Gary. Cheers, Gary. Hair rigs at that time? You're definitely in there, aren't you? Uh, what we, we, yeah, it was hair rigs and snowmen. Was it? Yeah, with the old, what was that, uh, Christen braid. I can't remember the name. Silkworm or later, no, snake bite? A bit later. What are you on? Snake bites were like the pop-up rigs, but we was using... Oh, Quick, si- what was it? I can't remember. Oh, I can't remember it. It was too many years yeah, ago. Yeah, mate, a long time ago. <laughs> but yeah, that, that era. Yeah, it was cool. Mm, it was cool. Yeah, it's mega, isn't it? Yeah, it was cool. It was cool back then. There was like, the carp talk mag, everyone was catching um, two-tone and what have you. Um, but I, I'm, like I said earlier, I had a chance to go and fish those sort of lakes. Yeah. But that river was always calling in the back of my mind. But, you know, I, I wasn't going to be competing against guys which I knew were better anglers than me because I've seen their albums. They were like fantastic, you know, top 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 carp in the country they're catching. So I didn't really have the bottle or the nerve to go and fish those sort of waters. Okay. But the river gave me that carpy kick. It still gave me that, you know, essence of catching stunning carp, proper ones as such. So I think that's that's another reason why I, I went and done the river cart thing. Do you have any idea of the stock in that river at the time? Probably better than what it is now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd say that, yeah. But you had, you had no idea on specifics. It was yours completely as in a blank canvas. Yeah, I learned a lot of history probably about 10 years after after seriously fishing it. Um, uh, probably in my late 20s, again, my dad, I remember... I was at work and he phoned me up and um, he 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 had a narrowboat in a in Button Marina, okay, uh, which is long long the use. Uh, there's a few big marinas along the use, and they seem to be attracted to that still water rather than the fast uh, running waters. I mean, mm. the higher reaches of use is barbel territory. Your mid levels of use, that's usually where you find your bream, your carp, and, and fish like that. Um, yeah, Dad had phoned me up. Um, we was doing a kitchen in Wellington City. We, I just said to the lads, drop tools now. And there were two of them that fished with as well. So they came up and we got up to Butter Marine about lunchtime-ish. Uh, lovely day, walking around the marina. And we saw this pod of carp that he had said about. Um, you'll love this. Um, he had a toilet on his boat. So some just pump out straight in the river. Yeah. Some you have to um, unscrew. It's a cassette and you just empty it. Well, he'd been naughtily emptying it into the river. Um, where the fish had come in, it had cleared up his yeah. <laughs> human remains. So, yeah. <laughs> that was the spot. Yeah, but it's an attractive smell, I suppose. So I, can't, I don't know, but that was the spot. And, it, and Dad being Dad, he'd put spuds down. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing. So I turned up with a bag of um, scopet squid liver. And chucked them out. There's like a bar just circling his boat. And I just basically baited the bar um, to come back the following week. But while the lads were there, we could have, we could have a go for these carp. It's, um, it's quite a shallow marina, six to eight feet. And they were going around on the surface at the time. And we were just going, following into the corner, just uh, flicking uh, half pop up, that sort of style of fishing. And my mate, I can remember it to this day. There was probably about six or seven of them, and they were proper ones. I, I would say they're, you know, those flood ones from Walpole. They were black. They were okay, so they flooded out, yeah. yeah. But amongst them, as always, there was one, a bigger mirror. 
Um, it could have been the gingerbread fish, which it probably was now when I look back now. So that was one of the mirrors that flooded out four or five miles upstream mm. and ended up in Buxton Marina. Um, yeah, that fish, it come to the surface. There's his hook bait sitting there. I could just see it coming up nice and slowly, waddling up, big mouth open on it. And he struck it. He completely struck it out. I was like, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? Like that. That was the best chance we got all day. Um, following week, got straight back to my dad's. Uh, narrow boats. There's not much space outside the boat sort of thing. So I'm literally, my bed chair was like that on the back. I've got a bit more scope at squid liver. Chucked it in, primed it, squid pop-ups on all three rods going out. That the bit, the, I had to ram the um, bite line between the, the wonky old um, floating pa- platform. Right. Um, and, yeah, by morning I had an absolute stunner. I think I've sent you the picture. of the, There's one with, like, half-moon scale and it's jet black. Oh, yeah, yeah, and mega had, fish. You know, well, if you're fishing, like, leave uh, the, the pits that we, we have been fishing, to catch something as, like, mind-blowingly stunning as that that was it i mean that really got me hooked on the river that was just something else seeing seeing a fish like that and you know it's a good one you know i i, I had to go a bit for a bit further on on that I, I actually had another fish that day i had a 28 pounder Jeez. which is the big one and now that 28 pounder i i eventually kept caught it four times at 28 30 32 and 34 and the Offords, that's the biggest river carp that had ever been in that area. And it, it was last caught at £37, pound, probably about five, six years ago. That's incredible, isn't it? And you think that, that that pod of fish, if you like, they'd flooded in from wherever the preceding fisheries were that were around. They've inhabited the river, but they're nomadic in terms of moving about. You just pinned them down to this marina because yeah, your dad had seen them. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, um, if we're talking about like flooding carp into that i mean that that whole valley yeah. all the lakes or you, you, if we go from right from the top of the valley like elstow you know yeah all these all these carp just get into the river when it flooded yeah you know nothing was fed the wall pack was completely flat at one point and it, yeah, there's no fences anywhere is no it, it was just, it pouring and pour out so these carp have come from what was ever stocked around that valley which were leanies dinks galetians mm. you know all those and they've gone into that uh, river system and then they could be anywhere they could go absolutely anywhere tackle tactics general sort of river craft at this time because yeah. you ain't spent a great deal of time on there you're going to subsequently spend a fair bit of time fishing the river but yeah. at this stage what are you going in with the same as you'd approach a lake with yeah I mean back then uh, back then it was a boatly big game it was a big, yeah, yeah, so yeah, the lines were a lot better by then so boatly big game they're called leaders and then just fishing, you know, just a, a, a standard uh, braided pop-up or, or bottom bait, yeah. Interesting fish pop-ups as well. You said that before. Yeah, I've came to found, find, I mean, the snow, I started off fishing that snowman thing, and I know a lot of the mags and a lot of people went down that kind of snowman route. Um, I think it, it weren't until I was about 30 years old. Um, I got shown the chod rig. And okay. That was an absolute game changer. Fishing that rig, that was just on the, flowing water on a river. Yeah. Oh yeah. Who um who showed you that? How'd you pick that up? Uh, I think Nigel Sharp shown Jim, and Jim had shown me. I think that's how, how it came about. Yeah. Yeah. yeah interesting. Yeah. So that, like, so yeah, from catching them ones off Dad's boat, um, I got. At 30, I, I went through, I think it was with all the fishing I was doing, it was going to be inevitable. Um, I, at 30, it all changed for me. I, I got divorced. Um, okay. and, uh, my, my, my daughter, bless her, she caught an airborne uh, meningitis. She almost died. So there was a lot of stress. Wow. Uh, we had a big house. We had new cars. There was a lot of money. The business was keeping it all afloat. And I, I just wasn't happy. So yeah, yeah. I ended up on a boat on my own. Um, I had uh, six months uh, getting over, getting through a divorce, which which was hard. Um, my nan and granddad were married seventy five years, and I thought, wow. like, if I married this woman, I'm marrying her for life. So I felt like I let my nan and granddad down. Yeah. Um, it was tough. It's tough going, but I lived on the river ooze now, on a boat in a marina. I could fish every night, and I could go down the pub as well. <laughs> so, yeah, touch. Yeah, it was really good getting over that. Um, 
fishing off that boat, that's, I think, when it really took off on the river carping. Now I've got bait, I've got the chod rig, and now I can fish from the boat wherever I want. So I'm in, an, in a, I'm in a marina where I know they're there, and I've already caught 128, which then became my first 30. And, yeah, that leg core, chod, chod, that leg core running chod rig just changed the game. Absolutely changed the game on the river. Because it's interesting, it mate. Yeah, like. when you're fishing a river, you, you you're you've got absolutely everything else in that river. And yeah. I remember the next thirty pounder I had, I was using twenty five mil scope at squid liver red, massive golf ball baits. Because I knew the only thing that could pick them up because I'd been catching them were carp that are thirty pound. Mm. So now it's a game changer. And that chod rig just lent itself to fishing with just big baits. So years okay. years before, I'd done the particle approach, gone and got. Um, the Annecy bird mix, yep. and then built it up like that. But all it attracted was silvers. I remember going out on a boat one day after I put a load of um, bird food out, and I'm like, just got a clonking roach. There's like six two-pound roaches swimming over, over, but no carp. Yeah. So when I changed it to just big, high-nutritional value boilies, you know, that's stuff that they don't see going in the river, and all of a sudden it's like, wow, that's, that's in front of me now. They're going to eat it. Were they on that pretty instantly, or did it take yeah. a period of time to see them on, on yeah, boiler? Yeah, mate, straight. Every season it'll be the same. I'll be straight straight getting them. God. But that's the other thing about the river. You, you haven't got all the time in the world in the river. You've got a closed season. Yeah, yeah, of course. You've got June the 16th when they spawn. So they're done. You won't see them till sort of July, August. Yeah? So right. if, you, if you bought a ticket in June... And you fish June, you might as well just tear that ticket up because it weren't till everything started breaking down because this, these are wild animals and they're in a wild environment. Yeah. And that nature that's going on, you need it to get to its biggest point and you need the weed to drop drop away. Okay. So now they're going to pay pay more attention to what, you're, what bait you're using. Yeah. I, on lakes, I've noticed it's gone away from that September, October period. Definitely. It kind of happens after spawning. They know that they're going to get their free meal or such. Mm. On the river, they're, they're still wild and you still wait till that autumn period. And that's when it would started happening. The chod rig would be up there, pops up with a matching bait and that would uh, overcome the bream because it's only a big fish that's going to pick up something standing off the bottom. And those big baits at that time of year, it was the best food that they could find. And it it just happened every year. I start I started catching twenties, thirty pounders. Did the chod? That fascinates me to start with because it's not synonymous pop up fishing on a river. Mm. Pro- definitely not synonymous with what we do. Normally it's a bottom bait yeah. or some sort of buoyancy out like a snowman, like you said. Yeah. The, the the height of the chod, the the sort of flow in the areas that you're fishing. Were you ever worried about the fact that the flow might compensate no. your presentation? No, because the lid core pinning it all down. Yeah? Yeah. How how high was that chod section? Probably an inch and a half up. Okay. Yeah. I, I just I just imagined it when it was down there in seven, eight foot of water. You know, it's just fluttering around on that leg core. So it's pinned down. I don't have to worry about keeping mm. a bait down there. It's not flowing off after the lead. It's not moving. It's right there. It's presenting all night. I've got no worries. And you had it running as well, didn't you say? Yeah, with that running rig, you know, that's another thing for them to cope with. Um the bream ignore it because it's stepped up so high. Yeah, you know, I'm, I, it's a massive, it's, it's a massive edge it, on that river. It was a huge edge fishing that rig. And your your fishing of that river, you you talk there, and we'll, we'll talk captures, and we'll talk the sort of development of it all. But that combination of things you've highlighted as as a key to success. But surely another element is going to be where that is placed pre-baiting specific areas on that river when, you, when we're talking about these early stages. Yeah. What, what sort of stuff were you looking for? Because tangibly, you, you didn't have always, I'm guessing, signs of carp to go on. No, it, it kind of went back to the the tench fishing yeah. back on the lake, yeah, and bringing it up from there, from Wenangarn City to the River Ouse, I'm looking for those slower-moving, lily-padded areas. So best way to describe it... If, this is a very basic way of describing it. Um, like a like a lake, you've got a shallow part and a deep part. Yeah. Right. So from the lock or weir, that would be a shallow area. And then it runs down to a deeper section before the next Another lock. lock. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was basically about finding them at certain times of year where they'd be. So obviously later on in the year, they're going to be down in the deeper silt area. So yep. away from the upstream and ab- above a lock. That side. Do you see what I mean? So it 
Yeah. Kind of relates to if you're fishing um, a lake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of. That's a very basic idea to put across. But that that's kind of how it works, yeah. So finding them, different times of the year, they would definitely be in different places. Slow, and you said slower moving. You didn't want that main flow. They didn't like it, or you didn't ever catch them in that main bit of flow? I right? only found them in the faster water in um, when they came to spawn. Okay. So they, they kind of move upstream to cleaner, weedier areas to spawn. To spawn, yeah. yeah. And then, like I say, later on in the year, they're not, they've, they've gone. Uh, that, as soon as they spawn, that June, July, I couldn't tell you where they go. They just vanish. Maybe they bob, bob about on the surface somehow and you just don't catch them. But it wasn't until, you know, you, your September come around, uh, end of August, September come around, you'd find them now down above the locks, you know, the deeper, silter, weedier. They'd be there. They'd definitely always be there. And were you introducing bait across different different so- types yeah. of section? <clears throat> After all these years, I, mean, I'm, I, I can tell you, I've baited one section from June the 16th right through to I finished it like at the end of October. Really? Yeah, and through June, July, I might as well just throw my money in the bin. Really? It was just not worth it. Yeah, it was yeah. Not worth it. It weren't until, like I say, you can see it, the weed gets thinner, those pads start to break down. Um, that's when I knew, right, this is bait time. Rest of the time, and you'd be opportunist. You'd fish for opportunists. You'd drop in for a night here where you thought they might be and stuff yeah. like that. If you saw them, oh, yeah, that's a different ball game. If you see them on the river, they're there. So, you know, get to them, get fishing. That's what you need to be doing, yeah. Oh, mate, it's exciting river fishing. Mate. Yes. Yeah, but there ain't enough time in the year to, to do it. So after learning what I learned, I mean, in all the years I've fished, I think I've had three on June the 16th. You know, have you? Yeah, over 25 years of fishing the river, I've only have, ever had three on opening day. It's not until that later. The, the September, um, you'll love this, the September um, harvest moon. Mm. So, I mean, there's lads buying the ticket during June, July. Maybe they get one. They're lucky. They get one or get two sort of thing. This has happened on three different occasions where I fished the September harvest moon yep. and had four bites in the morning. Yeah, that's some going yeah, in there. Which proves to me that you have to wait later on in the year. Um, that's when you're going to catch them. They're, they're not, they're wild animals. They're not, they're not, they're going to be feeding on what they know year after year. And you've got to wait till that dies back to give you that opportunity, that window of catching them on, on bait. That's, that's the way to go about it. The, the second week of October, I think I've caught more river thirties in the second week of October <laughs> than the other time. Yeah, I mean that's a benchmark. Even even those early ones, mate, twenty seven or whatever it was, I can't remember twenty eight pound or whatever you said. I mean that's an incredible size river fish. You take out the Thames; it's got a few monsters in it. Yeah, Trent's Thames got is the, but definitely a different different ball game to the use. I've but still, heard that's a big big carp. A twenty eight yeah. pounder from a river system yeah. is some going. Yeah. Like that's a big old carp from a river system. Yeah, I was yeah, I was a young lad and I was over the moon about it. Yeah. I, bet, I bet you yeah. were the 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 sort of development of that that fishing and those fishing over the period of time that you were on there fishing the river how did things change because you said before it's ever evolving river fishing it's always changing for you over a passage of time and obviously talk captures and significance to you as well but how did things develop over a period of your angling on that river system um from like from living on the boat and fishing off the boat i mean that was just that was just the one it was just a great life it really was you know i was uh I was a single man now, divorced, and yeah. just going into the village every night, walking back and fishing off the boat and catching carp. It was just, it was mega. Um, uh, now I was in that area, in in uh, in the Ooze Valley area. I think the lakes kind of, I went to go and fish a few lakes. And I, I had started meeting mates on lakes in that area. So moving out of Welling Garden, I had now met friends in the area. Uh a couple of them were Elstow boys, and right. uh, I, don't, I don't think they were green eyed, but they were like, "Don't count out of a marina, Dave." <laughs> so I've got, I've got a river thirty out of out of the marina, um, and <laughs> I was like, oh, "I ain't having that." <laughs> Is that this same fish that you've caught a couple of times that's got bigger and bigger? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think yeah. So the first time I caught it, it was thirty, and I remember that that season that I had one. Uh, at 29 and I mean, it was like two ounces off 30 pound. Uh, it was, it looked like it swam out of fen. It was one of them fully scaled fen fish. Okay. It, oh, it was just stunning. 
there I am, middle of the night, ran out. I ran out naked, actually, because I was asleep on the boat. <laughs> Go on, the boy. I played it in naked. Full moon tonight, yeah, lads. So the photo, I've got shorts on. It don't look like I've got shorts. It looks like I'm naked. This, this that Obviously, later on in my fishing career, this is something, something as well. Um, but, yeah, um, yeah, I, 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 I caught that fish. So I'm, I'm there. I'm having some really good fish. And this is when these lads are like, don't count from Marina. Don't count from Marina. You know, it's got to be out on the main flow. So I was like, all right. Anyway, so that, funny enough, this fish, the scaly fen looking one. Yeah. Um, this coincides with fish movement. Um, you know, people think that the floods come along and move the fish downstream. Well, this fish, I caught it on Scopex Grid Liver Red, and I was getting some from my uncle. And he had a, like a, a, a boat two two miles upstream from okay. where I was fishing. So this, this fish would have, after I caught it at the beginning of September, it would have had to gone back out of Butter Marina, which I thought they liked it there. They yeah, lived yeah. there. Home, you know? yeah. Gone up through the offered lock. So it would have followed the boat in and lock would have opened and off it would have gone another two miles upstream. Two weeks later, he caught the same fish up there. Yeah, it right. weren't until winter time, uh, Christmas time, I was around his and we're just comparing pictures. So I was like, oh, I've had that one. I've had that one. And it was literally two weeks to the day that he caught it upstream. So these fish. How far upstream is he? What are you saying mileage wise? Uh, it was uh, nautical miles. Do you want or yeah, nautical? Nautical. Give me nautical. He was. I think it was two point two nautical miles upstream from where I caught it. So he's done a couple of miles in a couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah, madness. Yeah. That's crazy, isn't it? I've, I remember coming out the offered look one day on my boat yeah. and going down river, and you know, like the match boys, they say about let the boat go past, lift your pole up, and then drop it in That's behind the boat. Right. Yeah, well, this carp followed me downstream and it was more like a dolphin doing that whole f- in front of the boat it wouldn't it stay away from me but it was in front of the boat the whole oh, in time. the wake of you yeah and I, I must have gone like half a mile and it just stayed in front so you can see how that fish would have stayed in front and just swam into the lock yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. they're crazy animals aren't they in yeah, their systems yeah that was mad yeah um, but back to the Elstow boys giving me some great yeah <laughs> don't count in the marina boy marina. Uh, I was like, I ain't having this. Do you know what I mean? I'm going to have to prove it. I, I knew I could do it. I knew I could get out on that river and catch them. You know, I had, I had all the tools. I had the experience. I had, back then, I had a kayak. So um, literally from going up there when I was a kid, staying at our static home, I'd go up and down the river using a kayak. So that would build a picture in my mind of, you know, bends in the river. You know, I, I became in touch with what was going on with the flow sort of thing. So, yeah. That was a massive learning curve, just going up and down by boat. Um, yeah, so I managed to start baiting an area kind of beginning of September. So I'm kind of leaving it maybe a bit too late, I was thinking. And uh, I remember doing a night and uh, in the morning, it was a shallow, weedy area and these fish were coming through and I was in perfect position to catch one. Anyway, I've caught one and I lost it. I came back with just like a scale and I was like, well, I don't know what's happened there. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, the bailiff was with me chatting. Um, proper old fem boy, you know, first thing in the morning, all right, there, boy, and he couldn't get rid of him. So he's seen me catch this fish and uh, lo and behold, a few days later, my apprentice at the time, bless him, had gone in there and he caught a cracking 28 pound mirror Ooh. and a common of about 19 pound, I think it was, he'll, he'll be able to remind me. And, uh, you know, proper carp. And I was like, well done, well done. If I was gutted, I was seething. You know, he'd, yeah, yeah, yeah. he'd seen where, well, the bailiff had came him all the info. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> so now I'm like, oh, God, so mid-September, I'm starting to panic about this. Am I going to be able to do this? Um, I had to go uh, about a mile and a half downstream from where I had been baiting, and then I started it all over again. Um, done my first night about two weeks after baiting it up and oh, there was an overhanging willow and I don't know how, maybe I cast it in the night over the tree after catching a, I don't know, a chub or something. But anyway, it got stuck in one branch hanging off the willow. I could see this carp just... Oh, stuck. so you had one on, you yeah, mean? Was, oh, no. Oh, no. So I lost that one. Oh. And I'm thinking, you know, I might have really ruined this. I've... He's he's I make my apprentice has had all the fish. I've lost one, but perseverance. I went back um, the following weekend and it gets even worse. <laughs> well, you didn't lose another one. No, 
I set out downstream from the willow, a little bit further away from the willow this time, so I didn't like get caught up in the willow. Um, and it got to about, it got to about half past twelve, and I was still awake, and I could see coming upstream. At first, I thought it was a canoe. Yeah, and then I thought it was like one of these remote controlled submarines, like the water was parting at the front. It was coming up the stream towards me. I was what, what the hell is that? And it wasn't until it come right past me, I could see it was an otter. I was like, oh, no. I remember running upstream from the willow and it coming back up, looking me straight in the eyes. And this is the first time, this was 2010. Uh, this is like the first time I've ever seen yeah. an otter on the river. So it's like... 20- 10 yeah Jeez. yeah so it's like what do i do now you know is this ruined all my chances mm. but you're there so i had to carry on um literally by six o'clock in the morning i had uh over 60 pound brace of river carp in front of me Jeez, epic. yeah so <laughs> all that misfortune le- led to like probably one of the uh, it might even still be today one of the biggest brace of river carp on, on Great River Race. Um, yeah. It's just, I must be. I've not heard of, yeah. of that, mate. That's an incredible couple. Yeah, of mega. Carp, yeah. mate. Yeah. Hook baits wise, you said, is it matching boilies and chod rigs? Same yeah, thing? back then it was still the scope at squid, I think, back then. Was yeah. It? Yeah, back on the scope at squid. Yeah. You do anything with that? Do you mesh it up or anything like that? No, or was just, it just as it was? As it was, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, don't mess about just for sure. It's it interesting as well. Like a lot of people say, especially in river systems, that like natural baits or more natural baits take take a time to sort of wean them on to sort of boily. But you're saying here, yeah, these fish are straight on them. Yeah, it's probably, as soon as that time of year, which is clearly critical. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're on them. I know they're used to naturals, just you know, snails, shrimp, whatever, whatever. But you're putting something that good in front of them, aren't you? You're putting, a, you're putting something that they, you know, they, bug, a big dirty. Yeah, bug, they don't, don't you? they don't see it, do they? And all of a sudden, like it's there, it's there. And yeah, they what do they go like? They must go like stink, oh, mate. Mate, yeah. What's your gear saying? What were you, what were you using at the time? Mainline sort of rods, that whole hard set, hardware uh, setup. I th- I think it was the old X line back then, or it might have been before the X line. I can't really remember. Um, just heavy, heavy, brutal lines, you know. Well, like 20 pound fluoro? Yeah, 20 pound lines. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember um, like fishing in the offered some lads uh, who'd seen the carp that I caught, and I'd be chatting to them, and they'd be like, I lost a massive one last night. It steamed off. And I was like, no, that is a mid 20 pound river carp. Yeah. You, you don't need bobbins. It's just <laughs> straight off. It's just like screamer, absolute screamer. Absolute screamer. Everyone. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, river carp, ridiculous. Mental, wild, yeah, you, crazy, underwater torpedo. Yeah. <laughs> Every away. cliche you can possibly yeah. say. Yeah. It's thrilling. It's like, you know, you're quiet. You know it's going to happen. You're quiet all night and then, <laughs> absolute one-toner. Yeah. Every single one of them. The mid-20s fight better than the mid-30s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mad. The, the sort of stamp of fish there, you talked about, obviously, the stock maybe potentially changing over time, but you talk about your first 30. There seems to be a lot of fish in that sort of 20 pound to 30 pound bracket. No, yeah. was it, was there a lot smaller than that? Anything seemed bigger than that? Um, if I'm going smaller, um, I did put it out there one day on social media and I've heard lakes have these, these little wild commons that you don't really yeah. see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember one year I had a couple of little wildy looking ones, but people were like, no, they're not wild these days. They could have been, who knows? Uh, I also remember like one year they're spawning mm. and you don't see them in the river. They're, they're like ghosts. But, you know, when it comes to spawning, you get a chance to see them. And I remember this one year, I could clearly see there was tons and tons of carp, which I'd never seen before. Mm. And there were all these little wildy commons. There were so many of them there, you know? God, weird. Yeah, but you don't ever catch them. You don't ever catch them. What about other species in there? Did you obviously at the time when you you baiting, you're putting some bait in, you've talked about this key time at the back end of the year. Were you were you troubled with other species? The bream in there, the chub in there? Yeah, there was a mainline I remember the mainline ones with mainline on, on their one of their bait. They'd done a green bait, I can't remember. And I okay. remember just catching <laughs> funny enough, I saw Angling Times, there was a chap who put up a load of chub one year. Right. And I was thinking, I'll just beat that last night. I think I've had like 10 fours and 10 fives. And it was just, just one after the other. So sometimes, depending on what year, you, you might end up with different species where there, there's too many of them. And you, you, you end up catching more 
like that. They go through cycles. Bream, I said to you earlier, they last like 10, 14 years. Yeah. Then you don't get them or they're smaller, they're new stockings or stuff like that. So it's forever changing. Yeah. It's some years would definitely be different to other years. Your best year on there, what we're talking? Um, every year. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna say what, you catch, catch wise. Yeah. I, I remember one year uh, I had my first bite in August and I've been persevering. We'd had a big barbecue that night. <laughs> and I remember going back and I, I'd, I'd boat a little way out and then cast the rest of the way. And I remember just being that pissed. I, I flicked it over the back of my shoulder. No. Yeah, and it went all right, I suppose, because by the morning with a terrible hangover, I caught my like first one of that year, like jet black, like old wall pack style car, just absolutely stunning. Um it went on that year, so I think I had about 12 that year, which is just incredible. Yeah, That's an incredible year. Um, and I ended up, I remember seeing a common at my at my feet, um, proper glassy looking common. I was like, oh, you're quite nice, aren't you? Mm. I kept seeing it, but I couldn't catch it. And I think the last fish in sort of the end of September was, was that fish. I, I managed to catch it. Stunning, stunning common. Uh, 29. Now that's that's a funny thing. The amount of commons that I caught over all the years of fishing, I could never catch a thirty pound common. I could only ever catch twenty eights, twenty nines, twenty eights, twenty nines. Couldn't get my thirty pound common. I'd, I'd clocked up about six or seven thirty pound mirrors, but I just couldn't get into the bigger commons. So that for years was all I ever wanted to catch. But just know a thirty pound common out, out of the Great River is. That's amazing, but bait quantity wise, what sort of stuff were you getting for? You're talking here, like let's say in a season, a good season would be how many carp? Uh, well, four. Yeah, that would be a good season on a river. You just said twelve. And yeah, that was just, an exceptional yeah, year. Yeah. So like, twelve. What sort of quantities of bait are you using at that time? Uh, I probably, oh, I probably got up to that. I've probably done a hundred kilos. Did you? Yeah, probably got right up there. And they were all eighteen millers plus. They were big baits. Proper yeah. positive. Yeah, let them stuff. have it. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah. yeah. Oh my, there's some angry the things, ob- observations, and things that you saw from those carp. Obviously, you're catching them. You're catching them in specific areas along that stretch over a course of time. Yeah. Were they creatures of habit? Did they stay in those particular pockets? Did they change in terms of where they were along that stretch? Or did they always stay pretty uniform? If you're going to find them at this time of year, yeah. they're going to be there. I think that's the beauty of the river. You, you just never know what you're going to get next. So the answer to your question is it was always changing. Um, I'd fished the office section for years, absolutely years, and I'd go upstream from it, downstream from it. I'd, I'd try it. Paxton, St. Near, so to go down to St. Ives. Um, and I probably had left the office section alone for about eight years. Wow. And I went back and fished it. And uh, I remember there was a flood, proper flood that year. And I would let it go through, albeit I baited what looked like a, um, like a tornado, an underwater tornado, what do they call it? It was just like an actual right. whirlpool, like a big oh, whirlpool. Okay. I thought, if the river's going like that, and that's spinning back like that, that's going to be a holding area for these fish. And I stuck five kilos in before I left. And that's when the water was coming up. So I left it three days, left the water to go back down, and I went back. I was with um, Forney Weir's uh, bailiff, David Vaughan. Okay. Uh, he was working in the area. He said, I'll, I'll come fish with you. I was like, brilliant. I've just baited in the spot. We'll go and fish. Um. <sighs> Of all those years of fishing that off a stretch, I thought I'd caught pretty much all of them. And for me to wake up in the morning with what was just the most stunning black 30 pound, I think it was 30 pounds, like 10 ounce river mirror that I'd never seen before. After all those years of fishing it, it was just confirming like, you know, every year it's changing. You don't know what's going to turn. It, that that fish could have come from anywhere. Mm. Absolutely everywhere. And this was the other crazy thing. I've caught a River 30, which is like, that's that's enough. Yeah. it's But it's black. It's stunning. It's like everything you'd want f- from the river. The next fish, which I caught a little bit later in the morning, 
the bailiff had turned up. The Obas bailiff had turned oh up. Oh my days! And he was like, "How are you getting on, Dad?" No, nah, yeah, no, no, nothing like that. That's <laughs> the wrong time I knew he'd be bike. straight in there. It was about ten, eleven. Later on, I've never had bikes really around that time. It's usually overnight sort of thing when it's their time to come out and look up and down the river. Yeah, and then Rod's absolutely ripped off, and I was like. That'd be a carp. Like, <laughs> I played it in. It went miles. It was upstream, like yards, 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 and then, and that's against the flow. After the after the rivers, it's still in like full speed. Yeah, it, yeah, it's yeah. going up upstream. Managed to get it back, and this is the maddest thing. Um, that fish, I'd, you know, I've got mates that fish that area, so I kind of know what's coming out. That fish, I caught it ten years before, and no one else had ever caught it. <sighs> It was 28 pound and it was just, just mega. 10 years yeah, before. Yeah. Big like apple slice scales down. It's just like, so yeah, yeah that kind of confirmed it. There's, there's locals and there's ones that are just going wherever they Doing want. Whatever they want. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you don't know within the grand scheme of things, what's no. kicking about no, where. Not clear. Did you see them? Did you see them show no, or not? No. Because how deep's that river? Uh, to 12 foot, 14 foot in parts. Okay, so you yeah. have got some depth there, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's up and down, up and right, down. Right, fair yeah. dues. Yeah. No, um, August is a good time to try and spot them. You might see them on brilliant sunny days and you might see them up on the surface cruising. But yeah, it's not a carp lake. You know, they're not in front of you. They could be two miles that way one day, three miles that way. The and, next and that's day. the thing, you can only see what you can see in front of you, can't you? Yeah, that's you, it. That, that section, yeah. let alone, you know what I mean? As you say, half a mile either side, you've yeah. got a chance. There could be nutting out like nutters. Yeah. Mate. You wouldn't clock could them, would anywhere. you? Could be absolutely anywhere. By catch, things that you did you catch any other species on there? Any surprises? Anything like that? Uh, big chub. Yeah, how big? Uh, fives, big five pound show on a boilie, which is like, you know, yeah, something else. Do you count them? No. Do you not? <laughs> no. Or if it was a British record, you'd have that straight Well, yeah, in, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you yeah. go. <laughs> uh, my chat, I like centre pin. Yeah. Like, like, the purest in yeah, you, mate. Trotting down, big chubba, big lump of bread, like bang, that's that's how I like catch up. Uh, no, um, the, probably the craziest thing I hooked into was... Was it last October? I hooked into that they're renowned for being in that marine and they have caught them up to 70 pounds. So it was probably the biggest thing I've ever hooked. Um, the biggest uh, catfish in this marina has got white flecks through its tails. Okay. So I've got a little size six trolley out there and it's decided to pick my bait up. It was about half past 12 at night. I've got the torch on, like, illuminating it, and it's, like, over six foot long, and I, I was just laughing. I was like, I couldn't believe it. It was huge. It was absolutely massive. It had done its usual runs, and then it decided to run near the boat, and the hook just popped out. But, yeah, it, it was huge. That's probably the craziest thing I've caught, uh, other species-wise. Bad, it? Yeah. What about through the through the winter course of, of that river? Did you fish it much through the winter, or did, yeah, after that? tried. Tried so hard, mate. Um, it was literally... I'm aiming. I ended up aiming it down to just those three months: August, September, October. Okay. Um, I did have one thirty pounder in November. Yeah, that was I'll it. Do. Yeah, yeah. What was that? A mirror again? That was that mirror that I just yeah. said to you about with the floods. I think the floods obviously got them going a bit, and that's that's why how I caught that. I, 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 it's not impossible because I've I've had um, lads send me pictures of uh like catching them under frozen rivers and stuff like that so Jeez. but you wouldn't really set out to catch a fish under a frozen up but these lads have done it they've they're totally different to uh you know your, your lake carp i think they're just if you have these um crazy weather fronts and stuff like that they're, they're gonna slip up i suppose it's, they're just different species different animals altogether capture wise over the course of time how many years did you fish that hard I mean, you're still doing the odd bit here and there, but I mean, in terms of real, your mainstay of angling, how many years did you have on that ooze system? Oh, crikey. Um, I suppose I'd always dabbled um, through my 20s, but it's like when I ended up on the boat at 30, I, I kind of always took a break and went river fishing. Okay. I wanted to hunt those sort of times. I mean... Even when I couldn't, I'd make it so I could. Um, I remember one year, um, I didn't have the boat in the marina and you weren't supposed to fish in there anyway. <laughs> and um, I managed to get my mum, I think I'd gone on holiday or I was fishing somewhere else, and I managed to get my mum to take my nephew to bait up the marina. <laughs> and there was all ducks in there. And I said, can you go down and I'll show you where to chuck it. 
but just pretend you're feeding the ducks with my nephew. So they're going down throwing in bait, pretending to bait for the ducks. Good angling, <laughs> yeah. that, mate. Um, so, um, yeah, they'd been in baiting and a couple of weeks later I slipped in there and, um, oh, mate, this fish was just something else. Because I, I, I can't move nowhere and I can only fish where they threw the baiting sort of thing. I was fishing in about three foot of water, about three foot from the edge. And because I shouldn't have been there, there was just like two rods snuck down in the bushes. Mm. Um, the corner of that marina is right next to like a, a bar, a gym, swim and bar area. Okay. And the bar area came out onto a veranda and I'm just sitting down there pretending to have a pint watching the river. <laughs> and it's, mate, this thing you Erupted. It was oh. like an underwater explosion because the water's so shallow. It's just exploded. Yeah. And I remember um, just the rod skipping off down, like out of breeze down the jetty. And I grabbed it. I'm thinking, oh, it's too late now. I'm going to get caught anyway. I'm, I'm out here. Yeah. And I just remember playing this fish. It, it's got to be the most angriest fish I've ever played in my life. It, it weren't stopping. It was going towards the boats. So I had to play it away from the boats. So then it just went back to where it started from and then going back to the boats and it was a proper, you know, left, right, left, right. It, it, it just wanted to get away. It didn't want to stop. Um, I remember at one point, I'm down on my knees now. I'm like exhausted playing this fish. It's gone on for more than five minutes. It's come past me and it's just got these massive orange slice scales down the side of it. And it's just like, you can see it's anger. And it's just glaring with the scales mm. at me. So backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. And I remember just getting it into into the net. I mean, when you catch something that stunning, you're going to let out a cheer, aren't you? I was so yeah. exhausted. I just dropped a rod in the net like that. And I remember the bloke behind me going, what is it, mate? And I just went, <laughs> underwater torpedo, mate. Like that. Was, <laughs> is that what you said yeah. to it? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely shattered. Um, I think I got, um, I got a couple of people to come down and do the pictures of it. Um, still to this day, people have said like, um, it was only 26 pound. It's not the biggest um, fish I've ever caught from the Great River Roos. But it is simply the most stunning carp. Um, it's just just something else. White bellied, black back with like orange slice scales down through the middle of it. The shape of it, um, it's got like a red tail to it. It's got the black mouth overslung. It's just, you know, it's just an incredible stunning carp. Um, still to this day, I think this is probably the best way to picture it and probably how it got its name. Can you imagine being the only person to hold something in the world and no one else can touch it and you're the only person lucky enough, like, even the most like rarest jewel, this is even yeah, yeah, rarer yeah. than that. And you're the only person that's ever touched it, held it. So still to this day, I don't know anyone that's ever caught that fish. Nah. Never before or after, I'm the only person to ever held such, such a rarity. Yeah, they're proper special, yeah. aren't they? Hence why lads, they nicknamed it the Jewel of the U. So, mm. yeah. Did you see many other anglers on there, on that system? Carp nah. anglers? No, nah. at the beginning of the season, once people had seen a few of my pictures. Yeah, of course. Yeah, but they never seemed to, the, the, like I say, the September, October period, they never stuck it out. They were gone by then. It was too difficult. It, it's not, it's unprolific. Unpro it really is. It's. I think sometimes you're fishing for only 10 to 15 fish in one section, mm. but that one section isn't like six or seven acres. That one section is three miles long. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. And also over the course of time, and I'm, I'm only guessing at this because I haven't got the same experience as you, other factors, predation, et cetera. You said 2010, you saw your first otter, yeah. but over a period of time, those fish, the fencing of subsequent fisheries around yeah. stopping that movement or influx of fish in, yeah. That system, over time, there's less and less targets for you, isn't there? Yeah, definitely. The floods, uh, everything you've mentioned before, and the fact that it doesn't like it, no happy hunting ground lasts forever. It's just it's that's just nature taking its course. Definitely. Um, today, it's definitely not the same as what it used to be. I'm not mm. saying they're not there because they, like I say, they pop up everywhere. Um, I think the last one I caught. Um, and this is the other thing. I spent two weeks fishing a section and it wasn't until, you know, well in, so like after two weeks, I saw one fish, but I caught it. So it was just like happy days. But that was it. I gave up straight after that. There's no point in me carrying on if I can't find them or see them sort of thing. 
when you found them and you located them on there, was it a case of that being the most important thing? You talked about your presentation, you nailed, you were confident in the chod rig, yeah. you were confident in the boilie, you were confident in the bigger baits you were using. But if you got location and you saw the fish there, yeah. you'd invariably get a bite in Uckham. Yeah. That much of a guarantee. Yeah, yeah, it is it is that. You, you really need to find them. I, I got lucky on a lot of occasions, sort of just... Um, you know, if you saw an overhanging tree, you'd cast to it, and sometimes you'd get lucky. It was that kind of fishing. Okay. It was a bit more than that, but sometimes I got lucky, and sometimes I just knew they were there, sort of thing. The, the, the you know, the geographical layout of the river, just I knew they'd be there. I knew that that's where they'd turn up. That's the thing to, for them to turn up, and you be there at the right time when they do turn up. Yeah. Jeez. Over that course of time in the angling on that system, how many different thirties did you have? Um, I'm I'm up to date on ten different thirties. I've caught more. I caught like I caught some a few times, but I managed to get ten different thirties. Yeah, ten and different UK that's epic, river carp mate. Thirties, yeah. I'm not had one. <laughs> mate, that's incredible. I tell you, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But from that system as well, I don't know of too many. The grapevine and things I know is quite tight because they are special fish. But still, yeah. that is an incredible achievement. The 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 fishing on there for you, looking at it now, at that time where you're starting to double up on fish and things are thinning out, what made you stay on that system and carry on fishing? And why haven't you subsequently absconded to the Thames or somewhere else, mate? Uh, Crikey, which one do you want me to answer first? Well, um, you go. You go whatever order you want, mate. <laughs> um, I... I, I'm probably renowned as a Cambridge angler. I'm going to put this out there. I'm probably renowned as a Cambridge angler. Um, I'm not paid to go cart fishing. I've done everything off my own back. So one is cost. For me to travel up and down to the Thames, it's, you know, I'm going to have to find time from work and stuff. So, yeah. I've, yeah, okay. I've done everything off my own back. It's been my own fishing. I'm not a sponsored paid angler. So that that's probably why I've not... Um, ventured further afield but saying that in Cambridgeshire it's all on my doorstep I've got everything I want on my doorstep got a lot of decent lakes yeah yeah. so yeah that's probably one of the reasons why what was the other question what the the fish repeats over that course of time Um, what kept you going because obviously you've you've accumulated 10 plus different fish incredible but there is a time where you're finding the same fish different parts of stretch you know it yeah it's it's Let's, let's say uh, uh, sort of every three years mm. I'm fishing a different three mile long section. Okay. So I've still got options on different sections to go and fish. The last two river thirties that I had um, was when I brought the narrow boat in the lockdown <laughs> oh, okay. in 2020. So they're the last two river thirties I had. So again, that is a completely def- different section of river than that, that, that I've ever fished. So there was always somewhere like okay, could to go, refresh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, Kickstarter all over again, yeah. So that's what, that's over, that's well over 10 years, isn't it? About 20, what of? On the river. Oh, what, me On fish? your own boat, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a long old time, I thought yeah. it was about 10 years. Uh, 15 years, yeah. seriously going at it, yeah. But I mean, the, since 19, that's 25 years plus, isn't it? Yeah, years. it's a long old time, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, going for it, yeah. Anybody who's, so prospecting probably is the but wanting to go out and do a bit of river fishing t- for you. Time's not enough. That's what I tell them. Because, like I say, you, yeah, it's floods all winter long, so it's hard work anyway. You can't even get down to the river sometimes when it's that. Well, it's when been... the ooze flood is, the valley fills up with water. even the lakes. You can't even fish some of them sort of thing. So, like I say, you've got June the sixteenth. Mm. Up until that, those those floods come, and the first two months, you might as well write them off. So it's, there's not enough time. So it might look good, but it's 25 years worth of angling for 10 30s when you could go and fish a lake that's filled yeah, up with not, 30s and 40s. Yeah, they ain't just 30s. And catch them that year. Oh. They're not just 30s, mate. You can't say they're just 30s. I know, I should give them that. Do you know what I mean? I know they're special and I should I should be more humble. Yeah, you're right. So I <laughs> it's ridiculous. I could show you an album full of 30s that I've caught. Yeah. I caught one of them for the river, yeah, mate. So yeah. that's that's an achievement. The, the um. The advice you'd give somebody else, there's a lot of river systems out there, okay? Yeah. Some are talked about. There is a grapevine. There is some knowledge. Social media nowadays, yeah. fish captures you can see. Yeah. God, I look through your photos that you sent me yesterday, those commons and those shots. They're incredible. They're inspiring. But for somebody wanting to take on that prospect, not having maybe the, the access to a marina and a boat 
but wants to go out there and angle, what would be your sort of key takeaways over that wealth of time, yeah. river fishing, that you would give to somebody that wants to go and pursue? Um, but I, I, I can only really go on the use. I'm not an expert on any mm. other river except the use, I suppose. Um, de- definitely the time what time you go, the, the, the time period that you're picking. Like I say, you've only got August, September, October to really get it done. Um, location is everything. Um, there's not that much in the way of access down to the river because yeah. you've obviously got farmer's fields, stuff like that. Um, if you can get a boat, I mean, I've done a lot of years using a 30-pound inflatable um, little fish hunter boat. Did you? Um, I actually got towed down river by a 34-pounder in one of them. Yeah, that was... <laughs> That was, that'd be like John my mate, Wilson. My mate was running along the bank, clicking me. I was going, full full compression on the rod, and I'm just getting towed down river by this 34, and I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm going to end up at like the wash, King's Lynn, when's this going to end sort of thing? It, it dragged me about 100 yards down river. It was crazy. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, get a little boat. Um, that definitely helps. Um, obviously, wear a life jacket if you're out on the boat. Um, yeah, that would help massively. Learn so much more about the area. Facebook you know people do let slip up on facebook now and again so you can get a rough idea of where these fish are being caught um and then uh, like i say that time of year big baits don't be scared G- give it to them uh and hopefully you know you, you could have a revert in the bag <sighs> mate if you could if it was feasible somebody chucked you a load of money and said look here you go go do it on the thames anywhere else oh, yeah, any other river system yeah i love yeah i've where would you go uh, a bro, would you? Hundred percent, yeah. I definitely go and do the bro, yeah, yeah. I've been trying to learn Spanish. I've got the Duolingo, and I've you uh, don't need Spanish to fish the Ebro. <laughs> yeah, might help, you know. <laughs> Tap them locals up, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's even better. Yeah. <laughs> that's all you need the, the Spanish for, right? Uh, yeah. Would it? Would that be the one out of all of them? Do you reckon? I think so. Yeah. Um, I, I've always wanted to do the Ebro. Always, always wanted to do the Ebro. Yeah, my mates go mad for the catfish in there. They've been out. I've never done the Ebro, but um, yeah, they go and do the cats. Uh, I think one of them's had a two hundred pound plus yeah, one. A big old cat. Ended up in the Daily Star newspaper. Well done, Dan. Yeah, it was yeah great. In the done in the Daily yeah, Star. Daily Star. Oh, top boy. Three of them by good mates holding up this two hundred and twenty pound uh, catfish. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, fair play to them. Jeez, the Ebro, eh? Yeah, yeah definitely the Ebro. Do you think there's anything in the ooze that could surprise somebody in terms of, obviously we've seen that Thames fish that Nick caught, yeah. we've seen the stamp of those Thames fish. Do you think yeah. there could ever be something replicated in the ooze? Um, no, probably. Uh, I always found that the biggest fish I uh, caught were definitely, at some point they probably escaped out of the, out of the lake 20, 30 years before. Yeah. Those 30 pounders that are caught, they're not deep body fish. They're quite long bodied fish. Yeah. So, you know, if it's an escapee from a lake, it's going to be a deeper body. You can tell the difference. You can see the ones that have lived in the river, river for abs- absolutely years. I think with the floods and them fighting against that sort of flowing water, you're never going to get 40, 45, 50. I yeah. think it's always going to be around mid. I probably, I might be wrong, but I, I've always found them to be around that mid 30 mark. Never got bigger than that. So, yeah, I hundred percent. There's going to be something still in there that's just black, unseen, uncaught, scaly, just crazy, looking. You know, one in the old wall park, wall pack carp strain, probably, or yeah, or whatever. But yeah, hundred percent. There's something still worth catching, but rare. Yeah, mm, it's interesting that it? you never really know. That's the key, I think, of those yeah, systems. I remember, isn't it? probably, oh, I don't know about. I'd say about six or seven years ago now. Uh, there was a young lad um, come down and he flicked a pit of bread flake out to what he thought was a carp. And out of the weed emerged this carp, took his bread, played it in, and it was a jet black, perfect linear. And I've never seen that carp since. <laughs> and it was like, do you know what you just caught there, mate? Yeah, mate, yeah. you've had a blind of yeah. that. Yeah, and that was it. He never fished again. I didn't see him down there again after that. But yeah, that, that's what I mean. It's so possible that there could be something somewhere in all that waterway. And you've got to also realise is it doesn't just end at the ewes. The ewes, mm. uh, now where I ni- live now, it connects to the tidal, which connects to the mid-levels, which connects to the, the neen, which it's connects to... It's a big to, system, isn't it? Yeah, it connects to... All of it connects. So 
depending on weather conditions, the flood waters, where they're moving through in the summer, locks that are open, they they could they could abs- they could be anywhere. It could be absolutely anywhere. What's river life like? You said now, obviously you've got the boat. Yeah. That is the source. That is home. What's yeah. What's the what's it like just being out there oh, in terms of like it must be mega happy content man nowadays it's really yeah. yeah it's beautiful I woke up this morning with the log burner on uh, made breakfast looking over the river uh, my driver picked me up Oy, uh, I've idiot. got I've got the river one side and I've got fields the other side the fields looks beautiful and frosty there was deer out in the fields it's just it's just absolutely mega mega no strange people. No strange no people. No weird folk. Not in the fence. There's no strange people in the oh, fence. I think it's just full of strange people, isn't it? They've just got all the strange people and lobbed them in one place. Oh, no. Nah, it's, it's, I, I love it up there. I've, I'm, I'm set, I'm, become the country boy that I should have been, sort of thing. So. You and Yeomans, mate. Yeah, Both da- you and yeah, your yeah, Finland boys. Yeah, I saw down, down the Ollie pub the other day. Yeah, it's great. It's a lovely area. So much fishing to do. It's, yeah, there's a lot in there. Yeah, so much water. We've got to talk so about your water. driver. He's not in shop, but he no. has driven you down there. Yeah, he's bless him. He's not a carp angler. No, it's bad for you. He only I'm listens not... to one podcast, which is Stephen Bartlett, Diary of a CEO, <laughs> which is very different to this one. And he's had to sit in here yeah, listen for the this. next four hours. What an absolute boy. He supports Watford, so he deserves it, doesn't he? It's absolutely <laughs> shocking behaviour. Anyway, we'll move on, mate. From rivers, and and it is it's unfair to pigeonhole you around that. But I really wanted to look at that river chapter because it is so significant in terms of a period of time, and it is different. You don't see a lot of people doing that. There's not a lot of gimmies, if you like. On to sort of lake chapters, and and one area that is still an incredible set of lakes in and around the Saint Ives oh, complex, yeah. mate. Yeah. That was when 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 did you frequent there, mate? Um, the Elstow Angler mm. fished it. And brought the whole place to light, I believe, when he caught the lady. Yeah. And he was the first person to catch the lady uh, over 40 pound, which was way back then. Yeah. Um, uh, Angling Times front cover he got, and it was like, whoa, Cambridgeshire's got big carp, sort of thing. So it had all been quite hush hush, and he blew it up, sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Years after that, the lady became, you know, Cambridgeshire's well, the lady. It was mm. where you went to catch, you know, the, the, the goon. So I'd always known about the place, and now it was on my doorstep. But you know, I was living there, and for pr- probably two years, I'd harassed him, saying, "Look at this! Look at this!" You know, the lady had died, but we could go and fish for this. Yeah. Um, lo and behold, he got a free ticket, and he ended up fishing it, and he caught um, one of the like at that time one of the biggest and best. He caught Colin. Wow. Yeah, and it was like, oh man, I've been telling you we should go and fish it for two years, and now you've gone and done it. So I was like. Right, I'm having it. So the following year, I, w- I was on there and I was doing it. I think that was, I want to say, 2014. Okay, so it's in amongst the river <clears throat> bits, isn't it? What me? I didn't ever give up fishing the river. No, no, no but obviously it's in amongst that period of time yeah. as well, isn't it? Yeah, obviously you can't fish the river through yeah. spring, yeah. so this was, this is going great now. I can go and fish for, you know, the, the carp of game machine, you know, proper ones. These are the ones that are, you know, you've got to catch these. You need these in your album. So, yeah, I set about um, fishing uh, St. Ives in 2014. The lagoon was the one that always kind of inspired me, captured me as such. Um, Why is that? I just think those fish in there, they'd been, you know, when you've got, let's go through all the names that fished, you know, Dave Knight and Terry Hearn, John Mack, all these fantastic, Gerald, we're talking about all these fantastic mega carp anglers I always looked up to and now gone because the ladies died but i've got a chance to walk through the gate where these daryl peck you know all these guys have fished yeah you yeah. know and it, like that was a buzz to me that was like was it oh yeah i'm, I'm now doing it and what they've done albeit the lady weren't there <laughs> but it but died same. Yeah, yeah it died a death that late there was no one left fishing that place i think that year i saw four four different people all year fishing that lake so what was left i remember there was a yeah what was left? Oh, that someone had a cracking picture of the pig, the black pig, yeah. St. Ives. And now that was like probably the best mirror left. Yeah. Uh, there was a linear. Um, I think Daryl might have had it, Dumpy's linear. So there was that still in there. And there was a couple of other linear. And these are like, you know, dinosaur looking fish, mega looking carp. That's a granite prospect. Yeah. Right? And I'm thinking, there's no one here. I've got a chance to fish for these other ones. Um, I stumbled across a chap on um, uh, Facebook, Andy Blue. I right. didn't. I didn't know about Andy Blue. He's the famous Barry St. Edmunds legend, and 
he had caught all my, I think he caught all of them actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and I was like, oh my God, I was liking all of his What pictures. a boy, yeah. Like, Stalking like, him like, up. Like, I was yeah. like, oh, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> like that. So yeah, that, that inspired me even more, seeing these carp, um, what was left in, in the lagoon. Did you think you were going to catch them? It's a big old chunk of water, mate, and not a lot of carp. Um, I was, you know, stepping, I, I'd fished other lakes in the valley, albeit they weren't like, top class like lakes like this it wasn't this sort of arena this is like premier league yeah yeah so yeah i was absolutely bricking myself <laughs> well yeah genuinely yeah. i think there was a rumor going about it's like he ain't gonna do very well because he can only cast like river distance like across a river that's as far as he can were you cast. pigeonholed at this time as river boy totally yeah totally it's yeah. like what, what you know and i was worried because i'm thinking if i don't catch everything i'm living up to them aren't i i'm gonna be like proper rips apart yeah what was your plan of attack then in, in on there because how big is it it's Lagoon's big, mate. Uh, Lagoon is, uh, is it 39 acres or something like that? Is it? I thought yeah. it was bigger than that. Yeah. Is it 39 acres? Let's yeah. say 39 acres. What, yeah. what was your plan? Um, it's going to sound terrible. Here we go. As a professional carp angler, I thought I'd set up in a swim called Dave's. <laughs> right, yeah. I'm going to rot it in Dave's. It'll happen. Yeah. It, the, 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 that swim is not named after me. But that's when, when I first started fishing. And um, <laughs> it's going to sound terrible as well. Just out the back, there's a little gap just behind Silty Corner right. that took you on a lovely little pathway down to the Oliver Cromwell every lunchtime. Oh, lovely I'd have a God. steak sandwich and a couple of Guinnesses. So this was like the swim. I've got to start right. fishing it. So that's how, God's honest truth, that's how it started. I could go and have a few Guinnesses at lunchtime, <laughs> come back, put, put the rods out. Um, I, I, within two weeks, I caught my first Lagoon original. You got you got to bear in mind since the lady died, there was only eight originals left. That's incredible. Yeah, that's all that was left swimming around. It had an injection of stockies, but yeah. they were too small. They weren't getting caught, sort of thing. And um, do you think they do you think <clears> they spurred on the originals that were left in though, no, or not? That size lake, it, they, no. those originals are still as crafty as you know as they've always been, sort of thing. Um. Yeah, so the first, I caught the dark common, which was one of the eight originals left. So that was my first fish within a couple of weeks of fishing over there. Um, I'd always heard this thing, but I used to fish off the spot. I'd have one on the spot and one off the spot. So I had a hinge on the spot and a hinge off the spot. Um, coming off the river, I, I literally went on there fishing two rods as well. So people would walk around looking at me quite weird because that's, that's the way we fish. Rods up higher, two rods. That's how we always fished on the river. So, yeah, it's just two rods out, one on the spot, one off the spot. That's how I fished it. What did you put a lot out? What were you putting out? What was the spot like? Um, it was it's quite a renowned area um, leading from, funny enough, and this leads on to, like, catching the big one. The biggest one left was the big common. So I, I never thought I'd get in touch with catching the big common. But um, basically, in Little Dave's, which is right of Dave's, yeah. there's a deep silty channel that goes right through the middle now a lot of anglers i see it today still they cast straight over to the island i get it i see what you're doing but that silty channel was renowned for those fish to move along mm. i think the lady one night you'd have to ask the lads if i can't remember but basically three good anglers caught three different fishes like hour after hour as they moved down through that channel Okay. So I knew it was a good area anyway. The the first bite, though, out of St. Ives, it being an original, I wasn't expecting that. No. So I think it was a £29 common called the Dark Common, which was just an absolute, you know, absolute buzz. On a hinge? On a hinge, yeah. He loves a pop-up, doesn't he? Yeah. I had a thing. <laughs> I had a thing. I, I used to use, like, a white nutty one. Right. So whatever bait I was using, I'd... Flick a few tigers in it because I know that those carp, especially on the river, you know, it was something, it was a hard bait that sort of stayed around. So I'd always fish a tiger and then I'd fish a white nutty uh, pop up. That over on St. Ives became the thing. I Every single lake that I fished, they, they liked a little bit of a white nutty pop up, definitely. Big and what size pop up? Uh, 15 mil. Okay, so it's pretty standard. Yeah, standard fishing. Mm, interesting, a white nutty one. White right? nutty one, yeah. The, the buzz of that on that pit, yeah. I mean, it's going to be a relief that first bite. You've got people that know you. Yeah. You've got the whole sort of come onto the complex. Maybe after it's past its peak with the with the parting of that fish, yeah. but still, it's a mega prospect. Yeah. You've had your first bite. But it wasn't a big one. 
No, it wasn't a big one, but it's an original, man. And it was tough going. And I could still feel those exhaust fumes burning at me. And I was just like, you need to get this together. You need to go over to the shallow pit and you need to catch the, the proper one. You need to catch the best one, which was Colin. Colin everything was Colin. I think that 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 year, Liam Duncan had caught it. Okay, yeah, yeah. he kind of brought that fish to light. I think he had it at like 48, 49 pounds. Yeah, I remember it being... And the picture was awesome. Near 50s, yeah, and yeah. it was mega. Yeah, he's got it is a very distinctive coloration and carp and proportion, isn't it? Yeah. Colin is... His mouth's sick as well. It's, what a mouth, yeah, isn't it? the tiniest of mouths. Yeah. The tiniest of mouths. Um, I remember seeing it and thinking, oh, look at you. you're not, you're not, you're not a standard, are no, you? No, you're, you're this big belly fish for a, with a tiny mouth. So you, you're going to be a bit of a tipper. You need mm. like quite a big area. You need to come into that big area and tip. So that was always in my mind for when I finally did go and fish it and catch it. Um, but yeah, starting off on the shallow. Um, How big shallow? Only 12 acres. Yeah, smaller, yeah, smaller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, not as many swims. So come the spring, it would always be packed out. It'd be mm. hard to get in and get the swims going sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> I started quite early. I always seemed to start quite too early. It was like end of Feb. Wow. Should have left it another month at least sort of thing. Uh, and I remember fishing around the back of uh, the shallow pit and it was all flooded. I was like setting up in flooded water. I just wanted to be there before everyone else. Get, okay. Start getting it on, you know, start start building the picture of the lake in my head. Um, and that's when I first met my good friend Tetley over there. Right. And uh, I remember he bucketed it as a swim that I wanted to get in, so I had to scam him out of the swim. How did you do that? <laughs> he recognised me. He was like, I recognise you. You're that river carp angler. And I was like, yeah, yeah. So we went and had a chat around the lake and one sort of nutted out right down the other end of the lake, which he dropped into in fish because I was like, yeah, you can have that. I don't mind you seeing a show in fish because I know where they're feeding. And I fished back up the other end and uh, I, I had my first fish. I had, we called it the birthday fish, um, stunning fish. Um, he walked past, it was my birthday and he gave me a bottle of red red wine. So we celebrated like, and we've been best mates ever since. He's just a great fella. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that was your first one there? That was your first, how, how quick was that? Uh, no, I worked for that fish. I've been baiting had the you. area. Um, again, like with the lagoon, lads were going into my swim and it really annoyed me because I was set up about like 15 foot back. My body was right back because it's a gin clear shallow pit. Mm. So I didn't want to be on top of them. I knew this about the river, you know. What range were you fishing at or baiting at there? There's a gap completely on the other side of the lake. So you, uh. you're chucking probably 80, 90 yards. Okay. But I caught them under my feet because I fished the river. That's how we've done it on the river. We, we fished the margins. We fished close in. I'd even see lads come down the river and boot it right to the other side of the I don't want all the flow picking up. I want to fish what's in front of me because it's exactly the same as what's on the other side. Mm. So I can see my own margin. I found some really nice little sandy spots and I knew I'd catch carp straight straight in front of me. It was all, everyone just kept coming in my swim and I was like, get out of my swim. But I didn't want to let them know that I'm yeah, catching, that catching them. Yeah, you catching them short. Yeah, so that was the first one. Um by now, Ted has like, set up next to me. He knew what I was up to, so he knew I was on fish. So now he's setting up next to me in the cops next door. Um, yeah, and it was it was the first couple of weeks of May, I think it was. And this, oh, I can remember the morning. It was just, the atmosphere was just buzzing. It was just... I've never been in touch with a place so much, but I caught um, the second biggest fish in the shallow pit at the time, which was Big Ed. Um, it was 40, I want to say it's 40, uh, 45. Yeah, it was 45 pounds. And it was just the, the, lady, the same colour as a lady, like a, a steely grey all the yeah, way through. Yeah, yeah, nice. Like a blue capped head. I mean, you know, a proper old Cam's vintage mirror. It was just. Um, so I have tech there and do all the photos. Miss coming off off the water when we put the cart back in the Ooh. lake. I could just I was so into it. I could feel the electric through the lake as I'm letting it go. I could just feel everything. I knew that this was their watery home. This was what their watery world, and I was just I was on it. I was just on it. It was just yeah, it's just a. Problem. There's spe- places like that. I mean, the river's special. It's the same sort of thing, but they're special because big, you ain't getting bites every ten minutes. No, you? big pits, hard hardcore uh, water fishing. It's yeah, it's just great place. To was it again a, a nutty one on a hinge? Yeah, yeah. You love it, don't you? <laughs> Stick to a winning formula, lads. Bosh, bosh. Yeah, yeah. Um, lot of bait put in over this. No, I think 
with them tricky carp, they've seen that sort of stuff. You just, you just got to put enough for a bite. And I've, I'd been doing enough for a bite in on three different spots over about, it'd gone on for about like three, four weeks. Mm. I just kept persevering, kept persevering. And I got my first like proper, proper one out of Shadow Pit, proper one cool. from St. Ives, yeah. Mate, that's a mega puss up there. Yeah, but that lagoon was still burning in the back of my mind. I knew there was fish over there to be caught. Really? Yeah, and it, it got to about July, and I'd been working, and Tet, Tet had already set up. Tet's quite famous for his barbecues. Right. I'd like to put this out there now. If you see anyone using a cob these days, they got it from Tet. Tet was the first Pioneer. Pioneered the cob. Pioneered it to the point where if you go and sit with him, he will talk to you for half an hour on recipes of what he's having that night and he'll ha- show you how to break it down, cook it. And it, I mean, he, he makes the best food ever. I mean, everyone on the shallow pit knows him and Laney were having like cob off. Cob off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Them two are like Laney's so like challenging anyway. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. He, he, he decided to go over to the lagoon it was a lovely July, lovely summer, summer, summer's day, and I was at work, rushed from work. And he's got it all set up, the barbecue's about ready to go. I've got there early from work, and I'm thinking, ah, oh, he must be on fish. I'll just go left-hand side of him. That'll do for the night. <laughs> Wonderful barbecue by himself, as always. Yeah. Bo- bottle of red wine, lovely. Next morning, he's caught a fish. Um, we didn't know which one it was. We actually thought it was a stocky. Uh Later to find out that it was Magnus, which was one of the originals. Luckily, oh, no. I, yeah, lucky enough, I'd just like got my phone out and done some pictures. Your phone out? Yeah, so it was, it was wrong. We should have, like, it's an, the Magnus fish, Magnus Magnuson. Uh, when there was um, the, the, the local lads fishing for the lady back in the day, yeah. Andy Blue told me the story, um, there was a lad that pe- like pestered everyone about what was going on, you know, where are they? And he, asking so many questions. So when he caught that fish, they named it Magnus Magnuson after him sort of thing. Right. Fish. That fish has been caught in lakes next door and put back and stuff like it gets around wow. the complex. You know what I mean? So yeah. it was, it's a special old original and we've, we've copped it off as a stocky. Yeah. We, you know, bad, bad boys, bad angling. Um, but yeah, managed to get a picture uh, and then he was gone. So I'm now left on my, on my own. And um, I've got just a single white nutty one out there and just kicked back, chilled out, lovely day. Uh, in the morning, again, quite a late morning bite on there, about 10 a.m., the rod has absolutely melted off. It's in that deep channel that I said about earlier. Yeah, yeah. And it's absolutely melted off. And I was like, what is this? And I remember just lifting up the rod and it managed to turn in it. And this is like my first experience of like proper old carp. Okay. They don't fight that, you know, they're quite heavy and they don't fight. Wallowing about, yeah. yeah. And this old creature is now like just wallowing on the surface like that and I'm panicking because I'm just thinking the hook's going to pull. And I'm slowly reeling it back in and I've literally ran out with all my clothes on, ran out into the lake because I'm thinking, I know which one it is. I ain't losing this fish. Mm. And there was two other lads, Nigel and his mate, who were fishing there. And it was bright sunshine. I could see it. It's bright. Well, on the surface yeah, all the way in. Bright golden fish. Oh. I know exactly which one it is. And it's just wallowing, wallowing, wallowing. And I managed to get it in the net. And I've just let out this absolute cheer. It's the big carp. It's the biggest carp in the lake. It's the biggest carp in the lake. So I've caught the second biggest out of the shallow pit. Come on the lagoon. And I've caught the biggest carp. At that time, it was the biggest, biggest carp in the lake, the big common. Get on the yeah. hinges and nutty white yeah, the, ones, the, boys. The lads, they done brilliant pictures. And then I don't know what they did, but they laminated all the pictures for me. And the next time I saw them down there, they gave me all these laminated pictures of the big common. But I was over the moon, you know, that that was um, yeah, that's special. That's epic, man, yeah. that capture. Yeah, that was that was great. Ha, ha, holding, that's, that's the one that swam around with the lady. That's the one that had been in there all them years. And now, now it was the biggest and I managed to catch it. 39, 12, I think it was. It's irrelevant, really, isn't it? No, it's a special carp. It's a history fish. It's a special carp, isn't it? It's just the old, one of the old guards that was left in there. and uh, I think it's still in there today. I'm, just, no I'm sure way. it's still there today, yeah. yeah. But it, So I've got now I've got two of the eight left in there, and I'm thinking, that black pig, that black pig's going to be mine. Oh, so you still wanted more? Yeah, I stayed on that autumn, and um, kind of putting in the theory that I... 
I'd learned on the river with just bigger baits through the autumn. Um, I picked Silty Corner. And I started baiting Silty Corner. Um, <clears throat> I managed to get a couple of stockies because now they're getting a little bit bigger. Okay. Those stockies are probably like the 30s and 40s that are in there today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, which is crazy. Um, I managed uh, to get an area going just, you know, quite close in. So I'm getting on fishing the river. I am fishing three rods now. I've got one, two, and three. Just fishing a steep eight-foot margin. Lovely. Stockies are picking me up, and they're running out, out, out. Out of the lake yeah, that way, yeah. yeah. Um, one morning, this fish has decided to do totally the opposite. It's just a big, slow, plodding fish that's going steadily down my margin to the left. And I was like, oh, this ain't, this, What is this? I don't know what this is, sort of thing. What's going on here? And I managed to get it back, and it's just a slow, heavy, plodding. I know this is a big old fish, and I could have sworn if, if anything, it's going to be the black pig. Yeah. Now, a few of the stockies, I'd managed to, there was a wee bed to my right, and a few of them had gone in there, and I'd struggled to get them in, sort of thing. So I'm praying to God that this fish does not do yeah. what they've been doing. Anyway, the worst has happened, and it's gone straight into that wee bed. I left it a while. Couldn't get it up. Well, completely solid, nothing. Yeah. But I'm thinking, well, it's not that far out. It's not that far out. How been, far out is that wee bird? Probably about 10 foot out. Maybe, I'm six foot two, so maybe I could get away with this. Sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> so I waited it out. I was like, no, I need to get a bit further out. I need to get on top of this fish, sort of thing. I passed a cold oh. bit. Ooh, like that, it's a bit sharp. It's late, late autumn, so it was pretty cold. Yeah. I thought, no, if I just get it. You know, right on top of it. I've done enough boat work to know if I'm right above it, Pop up, yeah. I'll be able to get it up. Go a bit further. <laughs> up I'll proper push my luck. It's just my head. Oh, that's horrible. You've probably seen the photo. I've seen the photo. Yes, I have seen the photo. Your rod's bent though, right. isn't it, boy? Oh, yeah. It's bent right over. I'm now literally almost on top of the fish and I'm starting to feel it move up. And Hassan is literally inch by inch with this coming up. And I'm thinking, it's any minute there's going to be this big black, you know, the one popping up. Literally, I must have got it to literally about two inches on my leader and the hook pulled. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Ironically, a mate had come along and he'd been shouting at me. He's like, where are you? Where are you? And I'm like, me And he's like, couldn't see me anywhere. So, and there's my head. And he, Cleverly, he picked up the phone, snapped that shot. That's the shot that everyone's seen, sort of thing. But that was the day I lost a black pig. I, I, well, I you, did you see it? I didn't see it, but uh, Gary, uh, Gary Carper, Gary the bailiff, mm. saw a fish the next day sulking in the pads corner, which was the black pig. It was probably that's where it used to go and sulk. So I was absolutely devastated. That's what the, does that feel like? A loss of that scale because on that pit, yeah. After going back, looking after, if I'd caught that one. And that was in the album. I mean, that's looking back now, that was one of the serious special ones in there. That is the black pig of St. Ives. I mean, what a title. And I lost it. <laughs> you looked it, which I is lost incredible. it. I'm soaking wet. I came out like a drowned rat. I was almost in tears. I was almost in tears. Can you imagine being your mates at the bivy at that point? <laughs> Awkward. Yeah. So, Cobb tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Jeez. Um, consolation prize. I carried on. I persevered. I had a few more, and then I managed to catch Magnus, and I managed to get some great uh, shots of Magnus. Which Did is, you? yeah, it's a crazy fish. Lovely. It's a beautiful mirror. Real lovely scales on it. So Magnus. So I managed that year to catch three originals out of um, three and lose one, obviously, out of the lagoon, and I managed to catch the second biggest out of the shallow pit. But it weren't Colin, Hassan. It weren't Colin. You weren't done. No, I needed to catch Colin. Did you feel that? Did you feel, still feel that pressure to prove yourself? Or yeah, not? it was all about Colin. I don't know what it is about that fish. Because um, that's not you on the river. You ain't fishing for individual no, fish. Yeah. yeah, and fishing the shallow pit, it, none of the, it became like that. No, like There's some great 40-pound fish in there. Real yeah. old characters. Uh, the parrot, which hardly ever came out at the time. Yeah. Laney's, which is now the new 50 in there. Yeah. But it, it just all, all became... You, you, you became consumed with catching Colin. Colin held the title. It was, it was the king of St. Ives. It was the biggest fish on the complex, you know. It all became about that, which was never my fishing. I never actually gelled with the shallow pit. It was, of all the lakes over there, it was my least favourite um, uh, lake to fish. Why it, is that? 
Smaller? I just didn't show it. It was not my... It was not my... You just gritted your teeth and got through it. Yeah, I had to catch Colin. The... Talk, talk to me about that then, because obviously you've had some success. You've come up with a formula around tactically, hinges, nutty white ones, yeah. small bits of bait, yeah. but basically areas that you have seen them in or yeah. know there's something going in. Yeah. Shallow, Colin, mm. was it a case of sticking to that, fishing for whatever was going to hang itself, hopefully? Yeah. Or was it a case of sort of trying to be more targeted around knowing where he's come from, knowing when he's come out yeah. and things like that? What? How did that How did that factor in that? Because now it is a campaign. Yeah. It ain't just going there to get a bite anymore, is it? Yeah, uh, this is like 2015 and I'm, I've got to catch Colin. Um, <laughs> I had a um, saying, no distractions. It was like, you right. know, it's, that's, we'll go down. The, no, no distractions. Oh, you sacked the pub off? Yeah, sacked the pub off and everything. Because I wanted, I wanted those rods out on dark, if not before dark. I, I was now hunting for one fish. I had to catch this one fish. The whole mindset was just like it, nothing else mattered. With, with regards to where that fish came out, it came out of all different sort of swims. Right. But, um, I mean, there was there was two guys. There was a chimney sweep that year. I, I was like, shake my hand. I need the luck. Shake my hand. His PB was 25. He flicked out a naked child and he caught Colin Shut over up. 50. See, that's yeah. horrendous, isn't it? And then there was um, Dave Payne, oh, the Punisher. He was, he's brilliant. Yeah, Dave. Yeah, bless you, mate. Thank you. Um, he, <laughs> this, he had harassed me, <laughs> that boy. He harassed me. There was um, another lad and he was like, um, I was fishing for Mad Baits at the time and he he was on the Mad Baits team and he was, he was going, he's one of your lot over there. And he, when I got round, the guy, the guy was in absolute state. His tackle was absolutely everywhere. And I was like, Dave, what are you doing? Come on, mate, get get this together, right? You need to get your rod sorted. And he's, I don't know what he was doing. He was going, there's a clay spot out there. And I don't know what he was doing. I was like, right, what rigs are you using? Okay, look, in the edge, I'll show you what, how that's going in the edge. And you need to fill the lead down for a... For, for a, a donk, yeah, yeah. A donk, yeah. Okay? <laughs> oh, no, what's going on? So anyway, he's in this swim. He's fished that night, okay, and he's come back the following week. Now, this is the, another problem with the shallow through 2015 through that spring. There was guys starting to bucket swims because this is now a fish that everyone wants to catch sort of thing. Um, trying to get swim choice, impossible. You kind of slotted in. Luckily for me, I was in End of Island, which is a really good swim and quite a renowned place to catch Colin. Mm -hmm. Didn't do a lot of captures from there, albeit it's come out every almost every swim sort of thing. Dave's come around on dark going can't get in anywhere. I'll probably have to drop in like a rubbish swim. It was or something like that. Um, lo and behold, whoever was in the cops moved out and he's moved in about two hours into dark, chucked two naked chods out there. So he phoned me up and went, I've got, I've got two down with a bonk. I was like, no, a donk, Dave. Give us his bonk. His bonk. PB was, I think like 23 pounds, 24 pound. And by the morning, we had gone round and he had Colin at a 50 pound in the net. <laughs> oh, no. I was like, how's, no. you, how's your luck? I've showed you how to cast out and everything. And now you've got Colin, the one I want. With a bonk. Yeah. I couldn't make, he, he he actually came, bless him, five o'clock in the morning, first light. He's come round to my bivy, pioneer, straight doorway. He's quite a big fella. And he's like, put his head in like, I've got Colin. I was like, oh, waking me up with his tone and winding me up with that sort of stuff. Go on. Yeah, jog one. on. <laughs> he had, oh, I've got him. He had, he had caught it. I don't know. I, I was happy for him. I got in the water, done some cracking um, photos for him. Oh. He was over the moon. He, he you know, he was like, it yeah, was, that's ridiculous. Was freezing cold that morning, early sort of spring, really cold. Morning. Well, he's got his hoodie and he's soaked through, but you can see he was so buzzed up, testosterone. Yeah, uh, oh, sorry, testosterone. I'm talking about uh, getting all kinky with Dave there. Yeah, yeah. it's the bonking, <laughs> mate. <laughs> <laughs> Adrenaline, that's what I'm yeah. saying. You could see it was just, he was Buzzed steaming. Oh, uh, yeah, it was just, it was great. It was a great moment. That's some it. upgrade on your PB, isn't it? Yeah, that's when I saw Colin's mouth. Colin, with that tiny mouth, I knew from then it needed quite a big area to fish into. So you can't fish it up against something. It needs to, and it did come from open water open quite water, a bit. Yeah, yeah. But I could realize now with the lads like smashing their PB by 25 pounds. <laughs> Catching them on, you know, a bait that it's got to tip up to. I can see why the naked chods were working so so well. And I remember saying to Tet, I'm sticking with the hinges. I'm going to catch that fish on the hinge. 100% I'm going to catch it on the hinge. 
So yeah, I stuck traditional with, hinge. So you got like, was it stiff all the way stiff, through with loops? Yeah, stiff. Yeah, yeah. Old school. Yeah, old school, yeah, you know. mate. Old school's <laughs> the best. Size That's six it. Joddy style. Look, size yeah? six. I was using no. Funny, someone said this to me the other day. Oh, I feel bad. Um, it was Atomic Tackle. Right. Do you remember they brought out a video and they were bending up hooks? Well, ever since oh. I lost the black pig, that had opened my hook up. So oh, I was dear. I was a bit paranoid going forward. And someone managed to do a video on atomic tackle hooks and they couldn't bend the atomic. They were that strong. What, those chodder hooks? Chodder, right? that's the yeah. one. Yeah. And I went a little bit different there as well. They'd done an in-between size. So to hide the bait, just with the bait sitting over the hook, to hide the hook a little bit more, I went for a size seven. Yeah, so I, I eventually f- cat caught every one of those by one on a size seven atomic hook with my little nutty pop up. Can you imagine going for a fifty pounder now with a size seven hook? Do you still do that? Um, Small hooks or not? I think coming off the river, I, I'm probably going to put lake cop. They just don't fight like river carp. So I knew what worked on the river. If it worked on the river, it was definitely going to work on. What? Well, so you used a six on the river, didn't you? I've used a six. Yeah. Yeah, it's mad out like now. I don't think I've used anything smaller than a four in a very, very, very long time. Yeah. God, yeah. I mean, back in the day, using eights and tens, weren't you? Yeah, Gardner uh, muggers. I used to use the size four and them if I'm fishing the bottom pattern on on the river. Poor oh, big boy stuff. Though, yeah, that, that was it? the thing. So I I knew like these big lake carp weren't up to like what the, the river carp to. I, I knew I could get away with a seven. And the fact that they were just doing videos where they couldn't even bend those hooks out, mm. and I started sharpening hooks at that point. Would you? Well. Oh, had you? I was just about to ask that question. Yeah, yeah I started sharpening hooks. Yeah. So yeah, mate. Yeah, so David caught it. Um, <laughs> I'd met the feral one, Leon, who lived on St. Ives. He'd lived on St. Ives. And there's probably people watching this that, that, don't, that don't understand. No, he didn't go home. He lived there. He, for seven years, he lived wow. on the Long Ridge. He didn't go anywhere but live on the Long Ridge sort of thing. So that was his place. That was his home. That was his address. So I'd bumped into him and what a character he was. And uh, after Colin come out, I thought, right, you know, what should we do? Can't, 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 ca- can't catch nothing. Let's, let's go off and fish somewhere else. And I'd been working up the road on uh, in the Fens. Mm. Uh, it was like a guest house. I'd been doing some plumbing work there. And they had a pond in their back garden, albeit it was probably like a three-acre pond. And it was an old brick pit dug back absolutely years ago. Okay. And the story goes, probably about 30 years ago, ironically, these fish were put in there out of Stanbury. Someone caught a load of fish in a bucket. Back then it didn't matter. They put them in a bucket and they took it and dropped them in this pit sort of thing. So I thought I'd give it a go. And we'd done a night on there. And by the morning I'd caught like this just crazy looking. It looked like an old leanie, mate. It was just the most stunning carp like out of this God, <laughs> what a turn up that is! Yeah. And uh, I remember saying to Leon, I was like, "Do you want to go back to the shallow pit, or do you want to go somewhere else?" Uh, Gerald was, Jerry Hammond was fishing at the time, and we went back and we asked Gerald if we could go and fish Brook for the night. So this is consecutive nights now. Okay, is Gerald from the Mad Baits connection as well? Yeah, and I knew Gerald from Mad Baits, yeah, yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, uh, I said, "Gerald, what's the chances of me and Leon doing a night on Brook?" He's like, "Yeah, okay." So. Hinges, little, no, I caught a common, about 20 pounds, mid 20 pounds, got someone to do a photo for us. And I just remember going, Leon, that's two nights. Should we go somewhere else now? He was like, where? I said, at that time, Sticky were blowing up um, uh, Christchurch. Lynch, yeah, yeah. Lynch Hill. It just seemed to be everywhere, do you know what I mean? I was yeah. like, I really want to go and fish there. <laughs> so they were mega, mega carp, didn't they? So we drove there. So during the day, we made the journey there, pulled up, drove past Stoney's, like, wow, you know, that's Stone Acres, man, you know. I got the ticket on Christchurch. He went on the little one behind me. Willow. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah. That's the one. Um, is it the perch common? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was up a tree and I could see him all in front of the first one when you pulled up with a little... Okay, yeah, I know what you mean. And all I did is I flicked... Uh, I've got two rods, be, me being me. I've got one down in front of that little pipe in there, one a bit further around, further out. Um, Hinges, uh, white nutty ones. Yeah, little white nutty ones. <clears throat> Come to learn what this was. Um, probably about three o'clock in the morning, just two little bleeps. So I've been picked up because when I reeled in, I didn't even have a bait on. 
Mm-hmm. Now I, I know what that was. These carp are that tricky. You, you, you know, one bleep is enough. You need to pick your rod up, fill down. I've learned this on the wall pack, some of the most trickiest, hardest carp to, to catch. So I was absolutely gutted. And I was gutted because we'd caught like 20 plus fish so far every night. <laughs> yeah. And then I just remember, I got to about, we had about an, about an hour left on our ticket. I was like, on, Dave, Dave, Dave. Run round. Lovely 24 pounder out of Willow. Touch. Then I was like, where should we go now? We stopped and chatted some lakes, uh, some lads on the lake. And uh, they said, why don't you go down to, oh, I can't remember the name of the place. Got it. Um, there is a place sort of halfway between uh, down towards uh, Devon. It's got a zoo behind. And apparently one night the lion escaped from the zoo and went down to the what? lake. Don't know. Um, it's a re- it's quite a big lake and it's surrounded by pine trees. Um, and we never knew anything about this lake. And we've driven all this way to this lake. And I've looked at him and I was like, this lake's massive. Like, you know, what are we going to do here? How are we going to catch one out of here? And we pulled up, spoke to the first plate. He was like, there's a thousand carp in here, mate. Oh, You'll right. be fine. So that was brilliant. So we pulled up. No, no stress. I think we had five each before we reeled in. Oh. And there was a, there was a, a, a young lad with his dad. We ended up like hanging around with them, out drinking tea with them, and we uh, nicked some water with them because we was off to somewhere else the following day, sort of thing. And the young lad, we was actually just like watching him catch carp, which was brilliant, you know. So that was great. We'd caught, they'd caught, everyone would caught. So where should we go next? And this is day after day. Don't forget. We ended up in Devon. In Devon? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we ended up in Devon. And Leon being Leon, he likes to drink sort of thing. And he's got, yeah. he's got, he's stopped off at the shop and come out with a flagon of cider. Cider. Yeah. yeah you're in cider country. I'm kind of shattered. Um, I've driven this far sort of thing. And I went and had a shower. I got in my bivvy and I fell asleep. Mm. And I can't remember that night. I don't even know I got the rods out. I was that tired. And in the morning I woke up and I could see on the opposite side of the lake. This heron-like skinny figure, which is Leon, swinging flagging, <laughs> swinging down a flag on the side of it, like nine o'clock in the nine morning. Nine o'clock. And what he'd, what he'd done, he's, I'll just put my head back to sleep because I know what he's like. He found a load of fish in the bay and he moved around and he, he actually fished this bay and he caught three 20 pounders. And I was like, Oi, what a legend. Yeah, I was like, well, good lad. Well done. So we got photos of that. And I said, what should we do now? Um, Dave Vaughan at um, the Mets. Yeah, yeah, weird. yeah. I said, should we stop there? Because the following day, we had to go back to work anyway. We'd we'd had enough time travelling and fishing every day. Um, Leon was on the same rig by now, the little nutty one, the little hinge sort of thing. And um, we got back to Fawney. uh, Yeah, Fawney, Weir. And Fawney brought us pizzas that night. Bless him. Thank you very much. Uh, We'd done the night down, is it the cut? The the canal bit of Fawney, Weir. And he, he... Brilliantly, in the morning, we ain't caught, but one of the bailiffs had seen fish over the Mets. So we sort of went and stalked around the Mets and we're just breaking up baits in the edge and we could see fish coming in. Um, probably mid-morning, I'm in one of the back bays and I can see this chocolate brown Kong Valley mirror just come swimming up. It just comes straight on my little nutty one, picks it up. Yeah, done. So the last final day, I managed to catch this lovely dark 24-pound CV fish it was off back home to St. Ives, back to work sort of thing. But it just been from like... That's ridiculous. Yeah, we'd like. seen Jill with one. We'd seen Dave with like Colin. And we'd done this mad trip across like the whole of the country to go back. And we caught every day. It was just, yeah, it was just absolutely mental. That's mega for an impromptu sort of jolly yeah. up with your mate, isn't yeah, it? it was absolutely mental. All throughout this time, obviously you've angled hard when you've been on shallow, for example. But... It's still been quite flitty, hasn't it? You've moved around a fair <laughs> bit. It hasn't it been like your, your yeah. textbook sort of, yeah. I'm here, yeah. this is me, I'm all in, I ain't moving, I'll no. suffer the blanks, I'll sit here and I'll wait it out. There's been a lot of movement around. I get Colin's been caught and that's the reason you come off this time. Yeah. But still in between that, that you, you're moving to the lagoon, back and, and et cetera. Yeah. When you got to this this sort of, I don't know, this point where you've got to catch Colin, he's been caught, you've seen him caught a few times. Yeah. Your sort of, I don't know, your your thought process, your your how fresh are you when you go on there? Do you, do you have the belief that it's going to happen? What 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 keeps you going? I know you say you've got to catch it, but there comes a time when 
you see things like that happen where it can sort of not grate at you, but it can knock your sort of belief that it's actually going to happen. How'd you go through that? What was the, what was the sort of, I don't know, what was the thing that kept you going on there? Um, that's a, yeah. I, if you'd asked me 10 years before, I would have totally doubted myself, but I had no doubt in my mind that I could catch them carp. I knew that the river was difficult. I'd done yeah. it back to front. I should have started on easier waters working, but I just lived on that river and caught some of the hardest. I mean, you're fishing three mile long sections. And now I've, I'm fishing a lake of eight. To, it's nothing to me. They're in front of me. If they're in front of me. I'm going to catch them. It doesn't matter what. They're there. I'm going to catch them. You know, it, 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 I've done it the wrong way around. It made my game easier. Definitely made my game easier. Talk to me about Colin then. <clears throat> yeah, no distractions. That's the. <laughs> <laughs> That's what no, I like that. That yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, uh, funny enough, again, it must be my nautical self finding myself all over the place. Um, I think with it getting busy, I had, I actually had another little camp set up on the long reach. Uh, there was a swim that no one ever fished, and I asked God, "Can I put a bivy in there so I can fish there, but then drop onto um, the shallow pit when it's not busy?" And he was absolutely fine with it. So me and Leon, we started conjuring up like Coca-Cola in massive like cauldrons of seed. And so we was getting really crazy with it, you know, really yeah. throwing ourselves into it sort of thing. Um, but I also had like a rod out on Longreach most nights. Now Longreach is a totally different animal to any yeah. lake I've ever fished. It's just a crazy lake. Um, eels, bream, the smallest bream in there is 15 pound. Jeez. You can catch 10 of them a night. It's just a crazy water. Oh, so there was a lot of them as well. Oh, yeah, loads. Yeah. And that swim, I was only I was doing my usual fishing in the edge sort of thing, putting in plenty of bait every night. Um, and all I caught was bream to the point where a guy, he travelled um, 350 mile round trip, sat and swim next to me, carried on fishing. I don't know what bait he was using, but it stunk to high heaven. I actually moved out of the swim because I couldn't stand the smell of his bait. But he'd done, what? yeah, all through summer he'd done these trips and I didn't see him till the following autumn. And I was like, how did you get on? And he had a, 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 a bream over 18 pound. Jeez. And I said to him, "What what's the chances of the PB bream being in there? And he said, well, you think about it. It's only two more lakes down the valley the actual British record yeah. come from. So, yeah, true. yeah, he believed that there was a bigger one in there. That's a big bream, mate. Yeah, anyway, getting back to where I was fishing long reach and trying to get onto the shallow pit to catch Colin because it was so busy and I'm working during the day. So if I pull out of a swim, someone pulls in. With me fishing uh, both lakes now and dropping on the shallow pit, dropping on the shallow pit, I thought about the long reach. I thought, like, this is going to have to be somewhere I'm going to have to try and fish. But it's rock hard. You've got um, ski boats all day long. There's an out of bounds. It's like, it's rock hard. It is, it's what they call the man's water. It is rock hard. But mm. I wasn't scared. I was up for the challenge. And I kept persevering in <clears throat> in the edge, fishing this this uh, swim. Uh, mate, I couldn't tell you how many bream I caught. I remember having um, my mum's little Jack Russell and some of these bream, when I put them back, the, the dog would get up with me in the night and they were bigger than the Jack Russell. I caught tench, eels. I caught so Jeez. many fish. I never caught a carp. I never caught a carp until like I, I was getting to the end of my tether and it was probably the smallest common in the lake. I've only gone and caught the smallest carp in the lake. Take it. Yeah. I'd... <laughs> After those bream and an eel, take yeah. it, mate. Yeah, with the like with that, I'm I was still trying to fish shallow pit, but it, it, honestly, God, this is what, what it was like. I'd finished work, I'd been in a good swim, I'd seen fish come up to me that morning, I've got to go to work. And all the lads on there knew. Dave Lane knew. Yeah. Um, Jill knew. Um, uh, uh, Tetley knew. All right. So I'd go off and I'd literally come back, albeit I could get back there early, say four o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> I'm driving down the track and they're all around Tetley and they've got their eating like on our barbecue, like yeah. finest cooked hams. Do you know what I mean? they're, like, they're just living like absolute kings. I'm going to work every day trying to catch this bloody fish sort of thing. It was a night. It was hard work. It was hard work. What I did find is like Thursdays, it was like the changeover period. So you had okay. the beginning Weekenders. of the week and, yeah. it, and it was that yeah. little period where I could get in and maybe fish. So I built up a bit of a picture of the lake fishing in between. Um, with my flitting around, which I, should, I totally should not have done, I also ventured onto the big fjords. 
So I'm, I'm never far away wow. from the shallow. I was just, I didn't go onto the meadow, which was too far away. I was, I'd go over to the big fields. And I remember having a little bit of a dabble on the big fields to which, you know, that one in there, that's, some, that's just something else, that fish in there. And I kept seeing it. I never saw Colin, but I kept seeing the one in the meadows. And I don't know what's a, have you, where's Waddle? I mean, if you can yeah. imagine that book and if they describe seeing a fish, just a big old fish, what an unit, I, yeah. On my own, seeing a fish like that, I almost fell out of the tree, you know, it was like, this is a mess. Is that the only fish you saw in a carp? That's the only carp of all the carp that I ever properly saw, like every time I, I kept tracking down and finding that carp. Anyway, I've, I've set up in big fields. <clears throat> it was quite a renowned swim for that fish over there. Still supposed to be fishing for cod. <laughs> yeah, but you can't get so on. My no distraction rule is like, God, yeah. you, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, it was August, and uh, every morning I'd wake up and the stockies had got to about twenty pound. I know they're forty pounders in there, but back then they were like twenty pound. And all I was doing, I was just seeing fish, like just showing a bar, flick a white nutty pop up out to it, and wallop. I'd catch them. So Stocky, I, yeah, yeah, I had about six or seven stockies. So while I was doing that, I was kind of enjoying my fishing, albeit. I should have been on the shallow pit. August is, now I know, August is actually quite a good time. I should have been on the shallow pit. Okay. It's quite quiet anyway, because the spring captures had been done and everyone's sort of waiting for autumn before you know that it goes again sort of thing. Um, one of my mates, Chris, come along and uh, it was a boiling hot day, mm. like mega hot day, mega hot day. Um, sweltering heat, even by lunchtime. He's turned up and he's like, do you, do you want to go for a pint in St. I? It don't take much to twist my heart. Straight to like, him. Yeah, come on, let's go. So we, we went down the Ollie. <clears throat> we had about, we had some, something to eat. So we had a few pints, four, five, maybe six pints sort of thing. And I remember I'm half cut and I'm walking back. Yeah. Andy Stafford and my ex-girlfriend, uh, sorry, not Andy Stafford, Andy Blue. Andy Blue and my ex-girlfriend are looking for me. Well, I'm half cut. Andy Blue, of all the years that he fished over St. Ives, he's never really been out in, St. Ives. And I was like, yeah, come on then. <laughs> oh, God. So we've gone back into St. Ives. And it's one of them hot, sweltering days. So, you yeah. know, I'm drinking, I'm hot, sweating, drunk. Uh, we've done about two different pubs. And now, by this time, I am absolutely hammered. And I've walked back to my swim and I've woken up in the morning. And it's just like, ah, oh, so clear skies and lovely it's like lovely i didn't know what happened that night until they told me my ex-girlfriend and andy what have you done apparently somehow there was a pizza involved on the way home and i've gone off and left them two together and i've gone back to my bivvy on the high bank yeah. they reckoned i probably tried to get into the bivvy trunk slipped over slid down on the pizza like a like <laughs> board like some sort of board. Yeah, so I've surfed down on a board and I've literally fell on the floor unconsciously at the bottom of the swim. Ooh. Quite a big lump on it, as you can see. I eat too much. And they've tried to pick me up and get me into bed. So the both of them have got me into bed. I don't remember any of this. I'm completely pissed out of my head sort of thing. Side, side all day long, you know, in the heat. In the heat, God, yeah. That's it, you got. Um, I don't know if you remember that August. Um, all across social media, everyone was going on Facebook and saying, the thunderstorm. It was like the Blitz. I remember like oh, seeing... yeah, yeah. Do you remember yeah, that night? I do remember that. Here's me. Slept through it. Slept through the whole lot. She said, oh, she filmed me, right? And apparently she elbowed me at the time. And I think, do you remember Vikings, the series? Yeah, yeah, That yeah. was on at the time, so I was right into the Vikings. Do you know what I mean? I, was I can like, imagine that's yeah. a bit of you. So I was watching that and uh, I'm, I'm totally pissed off. Snoring my head off. She's elbowed me in the, in the ribs to stop me from snoring. And the thunder's rumbling, and she's like, it's, it's roaring thunder out there. It's lightning and everything. Obviously, uh, I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm semi conscious, but drunk. Apparently, I said, it's the gods. <laughs> They're angry with us. Like that. <laughs> Boy, that's quality, mate. That is, to be fair, straight into character. I'm on. Yeah, and then back to snoring again. Mate, I don't remember a single thing. I just that's remember in the morning man. waking up, it's clear sky. And it wasn't until lunchtime when they, t they told me what had happened. It was like, oh you old God. fend them boys, mate. Like a flipping sesh. Oh, uh, yeah, it's a great little pub since St. Ives. That's because you great. fish such rock hard waters, mate. You want yeah, to go somewhere where you get a few up. bites. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about that Fjords fish, mate? Um, yeah, I, so in, on that big Fjords, all them stockies. It, I, after that, I had to sort my life out. It was like, you know, you told yourself, no distractions. 
what the hell are you doing over here fishing for stockies? So, yeah, straight back, and I had a week off. That was the plan. I was okay. like, here we go. So <clears throat> it was the last week of August. You know, after that little silly scene, it's time to get serious. Time to knuckle down. And I had a plan. I had a plan. I'm going to fish wherever I can slot in. You know how to get a bite. You know what works. And I'm just going to fish every swim that I can over seven days, even if it's every day it's a different swim. Yeah, I'm going to fish and move about and try and get on these fish. The first day I'd, I'd done the curly wordy swim, excuse me, and it's just the worst swim back then. It was just, it never ever done bites, but it was the only swim I could get into. Then a few like dropped off and I managed to get round to um, the step swim. So now I'm getting closer out into the lake, probably a better area. And it was Tet in End of Island. And Jill was in the hole in the bush. Okay. I think Jill said, he said, oh, the um, the shingles is free, which is in between them two. I was like, sweet, that's a good swim because they go in and out of that area. So I dropped in there and, mate, even like, this is how cool Jill is, yeah? He knew how badly I wanted that fish, even though he's fishing for it himself. This is mm. how much of a nice guy he is. You know, you've heard it said. He was like, you'll get it, Dave. Do you know what I mean? I'm just pouring it onto him. He doesn't really need that because he's fishing for the same sort of fish. Like, you know? Yeah. And he was like, Dave, you'll get it. That next morning, Tet lost one close in. Now, I heard something about the shallow pit. When the weed comes up, they get caught close in. Right. Right. And him and Laney had been hogging that swim like you wouldn't believe, fishing past to the end of Ireland. Okay. Funny enough, the first year I fished on it, I got bit off on the other side. No, sorry. Secret Rich got bit off in the end of Ireland swim. And on the other side, Gord let me, after catching... Big Ed, let me yeah. take a boat all the way across to um, Secret Rich so I could see what I was fishing over before I'd even got into yeah. that swim. <clears throat> Technically moved out of that swim that morning. So I dropped in and I was like, here we go. I'm in pole position. Yeah, good. Yeah. Good swim. I know what I do. I know how to catch it. I know, you know, the bait. I know everything's it's lining up now. I, I could, you know, it's going to happen. Even Joe was giving me the support. It's definitely going to happen sort of thing. Where they'd been fishing, they'd been fishing braided lines and they fished it over the first bar that was weeded and yeah. down. Yeah. So in front of them, their weed, uh, the weed in front of them, they, they'd never checked it. They'd never cleared it. So I cleared all the weed in front and made sure that my lines were going down to fish the channel in front where I'd seen an area coming over on the boat where I knew it was a clay area and I knew it'd be the spot. I just I just knew that that would be the spot. That's where it was going to get caught from. Um, all that weed disturbance, I definitely pushed them out because yeah. two bites happened in the cops. I didn't care. I've got a holiday, aren't I? I'm here, I'm here for yeah, a you week. you got some time for once. I've got some time. The next morning, Lane, he came round with his, what was that dog? Um, he had a lovely dog back then. Um, Padua. Padua. Yeah. Had to come running in my swim first, scared the life out of me. Yeah, yeah. And Dave's come like giggling, like come down, like both of us sat there and he was like, oh, it was a massive fizz over my left rod. Did you put much bait out? I was fishing two, two, two of them further back on the bar. I put just a little bit of hemp, broken boilie and boilie with them. The, my right rod on that clay spot was the only rod and I made sure that the line was sunken all mm. the way down. It was all like, you okay. know, pucker, bang on. That only had, because I knew that fish, I knew that fish had to go into an area. And it was a big clay area you before it went up the bank. Yeah. I knew it had come in and picked. So I was only fishing seven boilies. So one's my hook bait, and then I'd purposely put six boilies across around it. Yeah, because I knew that that fish fed like that. I knew that's, that's what it done. A picker. Yeah. So um, um, Laney saw it, because he's, he, you know, he's Dave Laney, he's going to see it. He saw the other one fizz. And then we saw that one, and that was something different. That weren't a fizz. That was just big, like, bubbles just coming to the surface. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Anyway, he went off. It got to about midday. Me and Ted have gone down the calf, and I'm pulling my hair out, and I'm like, I'm sticking with the hinges because Ted's brilliant for this. If you want to confer, he'll tell you. You know, he's, he's been fishing for years and I can dig into his mind and he gives me bits and pieces, which no doubt he'll obviously steals bits and pieces off me. So we we do work together on, on that side of thing. And I just said to him, <clears throat> going to catch it. It's going to be on the hinge. I'm not changing nothing. So I mm. went back. We sat over with Dave Lane and 
he'd asked us where we'd been. I said, been down the calf. I said, yeah. I said, if I catch it, I'm going to strip off naked and I'm going to swim across the lake. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I said because they they know I'm in, in in a good swim. So I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna wear the badge. I'm gonna let them have it. Yeah, if I catch it, I'm gonna swim naked across swim. Didn't know I was gonna catch it, but that's what I said. That night, um, oh, I just remember it was a full moon. Okay, it couldn't have been no, that is by oh, the script, mate. Isn't oh, it? oh, so lucky! All the lines are going out deadly perfect. I've now got fish down my end and not up the cop's end. You know, something's got to happen. I've got to have a bite. That's what I was thinking. I, I didn't know it was going to be Colin, but I was thinking, you know, the coots have just like slowly mm. got the darkness, the moon coming up. It's gone dead still. It's so atmospheric. You could, you know, you could play it on a violin. It was just crazy. Um, probably five o'clock in the morning, that right rod has just melted. Absolutely melted. I've got Neville's. It's Mark II Nevers. The whole lake's going to hear these yeah, Nevers going, up. bee, screaming away. So straight up, straight on that rod. And Colin was always renowned for being a, a big, powerful fish. Yeah. Uh, of the big fish, it was probably one of the most powerful fish I've ever played. Uh, weedy as hell, shallow pit. It's mm. Shallow, it's going to be weedy. Um, I didn't want it to go right. Because if it went right, it goes up towards the out of bounds bit, which is just ch- choked with weed at that time of year. And lo and behold, it's gone in to the weed. Now, Gord, that year, he knew how bad the weed was. And I think Laney had worked his magic and we were allowed to use boats to clear areas. Right. And retrieve fish. Couldn't bait from them, blah, blah, blah. It was only used for that. So I was, I've jumped straight in my boat, which was my little fish hunter blow up boat. <laughs> yeah. And it's pulled me down to the right, into this thick weed. I've got on top of it and I'm now like, oh no, what is this? And I've dropped the rod and I'm feeling down the leg core and I can feel it and it swam off. It's gone out into the lake into another wee bed. So I've like grabbed the rod, reeled it down and I'm like, oh my God, what's going on? And I've got the leg core and I'm like pulling oh, it. I like that's that. That's horrible, mate. Scary. It's done it. Done me again. It's gone into another wee bed to my left. So it's like taking me right around the houses before I've done the same thing. And now it's gone back up that channel. If, and you ain't clock what it is at this point. No, I haven't got a clue. And we've got a Scooby-Doo what it is. It's going up this channel and I'm freaking out because it's a lot thicker up there and it can just bury, 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 keep going. So I've gone up there and my little fish hunter, I'm like reeling down with a rod. I've put the rod down to my right. The paddles drifted off this time. Oh, God. And I'm panicking like anything and I'm feeling down the leg core and something freaked me out because something turned in the weed like that and I saw the flank of it and it looked like a black common and that freaked me out I was like is that what I'm and I, all I ended up doing is I had to because if it well, went scoop it I had to scoop it mate and I've got the net underneath and I remember lifting it and the boat tipped like that and I was like oh my god the am gonna end up in the drink with it how even to this day even the lads were like how did you do it I don't know I managed to get this big ball of weed like full net full everything in yeah, there yeah I didn't even know if the fish was in there I had to like paddle back to grab my paddle yeah. paddle over to get my rod it was just chaos absolute chaos I'm making noise in the, out in the lake and everything I'm paddling back to the swim I banged my other two rods and set the nevels off right got out placed it on the map so you still don't know no no, not until I peeled it back and there was this fish. I think, so yeah, Big Ed was 45. So anything bigger than 45 was going to be Colin. But I was still was like in shock. I didn't I didn't know what I had. And like I said, I've made all this noise. The Nevilles had made noise. I'd made all this commotion and no one had heard anything. There was no one back at the swim. Like, no one no. was awake. No, no one had heard anything. And all I remember is I, I needed Tet. I needed Tet to come and help me. I was in bits. I needed Tet to come and help yeah. me. So he was opposite me on the lake and I'm going, Tet. And he woke up and heard that. And I was like, Did you have you not heard this? Yeah. <laughs> I think it was Stanic Matt and Tech come round. We weighed it. We sacked it. I was in an absolute mess. Um, I, you know, I, I had to go and get myself sorted. It was, it was, I was in absolute bits, absolute pieces. Um, yeah, we, we sacked her up um, in the morning. Uh, first light, Tech come and done the pictures. I had a bit of an audience. Um, and yeah, that, that was Colin. That was, 
That was the one. That, What's that feeling? Is it more relief? <laughs> what is it? What's that feeling? I, I think because I didn't like that lake, um, it was a relief. It was a relief. I don't know why I didn't like that. It's just I just never ever gelled with that lake. Um, I got I got off that lake the next day. I never I've never I tell you I have fished it once since I've done a social just after the lockdown and I caught a forty five pounder on my, on a one night. <laughs> Fishing with Eric, the uh, bailiff, yeah. He, he said, come and have a social. <laughs> and one night I caught 45 pounds. Don't go back on there, mate. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, but, Mind yeah. Drop. I, afterwards, um, I literally packed down straight away that morning. Dave Lane went straight in there. Yeah. Um, we went round the other side with Tet and celebrated. We started at 10 a.m. in the morning. Um, Tet and Dave um, reminded me that I said that I'm going to – strip off and swim the lake naked to which god went no you ain't you'll bloody drown <laughs> you're half cut now sort of thing yeah. so yeah a lot later on in the afternoon the naked strip the run around the lake that's it was i was supposed to swim but yeah, I, you ran i ran yeah, around the lake yeah, yeah. <laughs> which, Fair just, play. which just topped it all off it was just a great memory great fish and yeah king of the complex <sighs> Yeah, it was a good one. Mate, that's some time and some chapters on there, isn't it, yeah, it mate? it was good. It was good. It was good. That, the best thing was, there's like, I've never fished. I, 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 since doing that, it became well known how great the socials were at St. Ives. Right. I mean, there was photos leaked out of us all partying and barbecues and beer. And it was just great times. It was just great memories. But it's also that, it's akin to that, that, that style of carp fishing as well. There's a lot of time between bites. There's a lot of like similar minded people on there. The people make the place. Definitely. Yeah. And they were great mate. people. All of them. Great people. Some fishing, mate. Still a mega complex, mate. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Still yeah, some incredible carp in there. Definitely, definitely. But not the easiest, mate, to no. get a bite. 45 pounder in no. a night. Quality. No, exactly. mate, that's <laughs> all right. That. <laughs> and then you, you sort of, <clears throat> you, you mentioned Woolpack before. You, you sort of, You've gone from somewhere hard, the river, to somewhere equally hard as in a lake, even though you deem them not as hard. But then you go on to a different challenge with Woolpack, with fish that are pressured, mate. Yeah. You've seen it all yeah. and are in that sort of, yeah. I don't know, in that sort of microscope all the time under yeah. anglers' rigs and, Russia, and yeah. bits and bobs. Yeah. Your, your adaption there, these two venues are very much location-based. You've got a strategy. I'm, I'm going from big pits to... Yeah, small intimate intimate like waters yeah what was that like that transition um, <laughs> um hard it was quite hard for me to get the ticket I have to be honest and they right. they did, so they used to run it from january um i struggled to get a ticket to get on there and i was only allowed a lake eight ticket first okay. and i didn't get that until i think it was march late march i didn't actually get on there until then to which I was fishing eight. I, I didn't really know what was in those lakes. I knew it was a great complex, but I didn't know what was um, uh, what I should have been fishing for as such. The eight lake ticket, um, it's some old kind of river fish in there. It's a proper mixed bunch. Um, and within the first two weeks, I caught over 20 fish. Out of, right. Yeah, so it was like, maybe I shouldn't have been on there. Yeah. <laughs> to which the owner, Andy Stafford, uh, God bless him, said, um, maybe you should have a Lake 7 ticket. And I think, well, you should have given me that first, you know. <laughs> I must be underrated as a river angler, you see. That's yeah, what yeah, it is. Just yeah. a river boy. Yeah, and um, yeah, I ventured onto 7, but again, it was too late. I only managed to catch two fish before it closed for spawning. Um, one was, in fact... Um, the ancient Lynn, which is, there was like four of the original fish left on the whole complex. It's a bit like everyone talks about them being old carp. Mm. The actual original originals, there, there was only four left. And one of them was the ancient Lynn. So I managed to catch the ancient Lynn and a fish called the little peach just before it shut up for spawning. Um, Tactically, what do you, what were you doing here? Were you doing anything different? Well, I'd learned something on the long reach. The long reach being a gin clear tap water, I had to make all my rigs uh, gin clear. So I was fishing fluorocarbon lines, well, yeah. fluorocarbon hook links. Um, and I just felt like then pop-ups weren't the one. Yeah. Um, you know, these fish are going to, they're just going to look at that and laugh at that sort of thing. So I started fishing wafters. That was kind of when people started rolling wafters as well. So right. I was all set up, all geared up for fishing. What sort of rig? <clears throat> Fluorocarbon? Fluorocarbon D-rig. Just a D-rig, yeah? Yeah, um, someone said this to me years ago on the river when I was tying up the trolley. I made my Ds longer 
I just think like some people fish a D tight. I yeah. just want a bit more moving and I want it to sit over the hook and hide the hook a bit more. Okay. So I've always tied up my D's quite long and obviously pulled it. So now it becomes more of like a hair rig. Yeah, so I've just I've always just fished like that. People have clocked me doing it. Some people, I don't know if they ever took it on board, but yeah, it's just something I've always done. So I had, had a short fluorocarbon rig. I know they're riggy, so it's a four and a half ounce lead, so quite a heavy lead. Uh, and then I'm fishing wafters um, as well, which is matching what, what I'm fishing. I don't right. want anything looking different to what I'm fishing. I'd been up trees and I'd watched them come in. I'd watched actually uh, one April five fish came in um, Jim and Andy Stafford had this thing about there being a mid 35 mirror, a linear, and it had never been caught. And I was like, You're just telling me stories, you know? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Was, you know. I was up this tree, and sure enough, it was one of the first fish in, which baffled me at the time because if this was a fish that never got caught, why was it the first fish Lead in? Lead fish, yeah. Munching on my bait, um, early April, gin clear, not much weed in, in, in the margins, and um. It had a 30 pound common. So these are quite big fish for Lake Hay and they've come in and they've started munching really hard. The water's clouding up. My rig's just behind their tail, about six inches behind their tail. And they're kind of moving around. And then I could see like my line flick. Mm. And those two fish had encouraged five other fish. All of them fish went out. Yeah. And funny enough, I didn't catch any of them fish that I saw that day. I didn't see any of them fish again for not until kind of next season. The next fish came in, three different commons, and I saw one of these scraggy old commons go in and just pick my rig up. So now I've been done twice. Happened another two times before Ooh. this old mirror called Lumpy. Right, like yeah, quite, yeah. Quite a dippy little carp. It's yeah. just come in, picked the hook bait up, tried to shake his head, and I could see it, and I've just rolled the rod down, and I was like, oh, hello, there's something going on here. You know, this theory of, like, the big ones hold back. No, the big ones might come in first, clear you out, then do you and disappear because they're, they're the cleverest ones. They're, they are doing you every time sort of thing. So then I had to change my game a little bit more. So he, hence the bigger lead. I actually lengthened the hook link. Oh, you gave them more? Gave them more, more of a longer hook link for them to sort of hang themselves on. So, so then I started catching quite a few more on pit eight, which led okay. me to fishing on seven. On seven, that longer link... Mm. Oh mate, that was that was the game changer on there. Fishing long link wafters with my little white nut. Well, now a nutty wafter rather than a um, popper. Yeah, that longer link hook holds mega yeah. like proper hook holds. Yeah, proper hook hold, proper nerve. Was that four and a half ounce lead? They they were struggling with it, you know. Big lead, uh, long link. It what was, were they? Inline leads, drop offs, or what were they? Uh, tournament, just tournament on a on a clip. Yeah. Wow, mate. Yeah. It was something they'd probably never seen because they'd seen the chod rig done to death there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, too right. Baiting wise, what were you, were you doing around them? Uh, something Laney had told me. Go on. A uh, few, few flicks of hemp or pellet. Flicks. They, they love a bit of corn, so a tiny bit of corn in the mix. Uh, break and boilies with a few tigers and a few boilies and only doing three of the midi spawnfuls. Right, so small patches again. Yeah. So you'd sort of find your spot with your lead, yeah. hit that spot, and within those circles, that's your target to put three spobs, one after the other, straight in the middle. So it's all... And that's enough. That's enough. That's all it was. That, 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 that's what I, I started doing. Uh, with them spawning, though, it gave me the chance to go back to St. Ice because there was still, like, three over there that I really wanted to catch. So I kind of dabbled with eight, then went back to St. Ives, Um I don't know. It's probably not. It wasn't as well known as Collins. So Collins, Collins, the the yeah. There you go. But no one really knows about the second drove. No. no so you, yeah. So over on the lagoon side, there's a set of lakes called the second drove. It's, it's on the second drove ticket. There's okay. three three lakes. Uh, Andersons, which is like a farm pond. It's it's gorgeous. Um, does flood uh, in Terry Hearn's second book he fished it for the fish called the oink still searching <clears throat> that book, isn't it? book yeah oh, so no. there's that one there's lowry's which is just completely covered in lily pads okay. there's the eye Are these smaller waters there? yeah yeah you saw an acre yeah acre water tiny tiny little waters so yeah. in, in real in them under the bushes that you can see them going in yeah real cool like cool carp cool fishing um, I felt like Terry and that's why I went. Did you? Yeah, I felt like Paul. <laughs> that's honest. I like that. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, the Ivo was, um, there was a very special carp in there called the Ivo Lynn. Not mm. the biggest, uh, hit 30 pound. But it was, you know, 
It was one of them special ones. It was black, scaly. It had everything. Ticked all the boxes. A carp you'd, you'd really want. Um, like I say, very close, intimate water. All the yeah. bushes overhung, so you could cut a few swims in the corners and you could just drop, like, tigers in the edge. And I, I was, like I say, getting really terry early. Terry tail. Proper tail. Um, I had uh, my first... I started it in winter, but the first bite wasn't until April because it kept freezing over and flooding, which right. is what that valley's like. Uh, and it was a, a scaly mirror. Um, I, can't, I think it might have had a name. I can't remember. Hardly ever caught. Um, then my next fish, a couple of weeks later, just a single out in the pond, right in the middle, just a showing fish. Are you back on the hinges at this point? What have you done? Uh, yeah, I, I was actually fishing the choddies. Well, yeah, I was back on the lead core running choddies because it was quite a silty, yeah, yeah, quite a weedy lake, and there was tons of bream in this lake as well. Yeah, weird bream. They didn't grow big; they grew to sort of three pound size. Okay, and they were real small scale, so they must be some sort of ancient bream lime that. And there's loads in there, ancient bloodline yeah. bream. Yeah, they, they've been there years. There's loads and loads of these bream in there, so the, I knew that the choddy would overcome getting. The, you know, I wouldn't catch too many. I did catch them. Couldn't avoid them, but um, I didn't catch as much as some people have caught on there on bottom baits and redfish mills. You know, they've been, oh, not the one. Um, so, yeah, um, the second fish I caught from there actually came from the Andersons. This is the thing about fish movement in that place. It actually came from the lake next door. We nicknamed it the Womble, Wombling Overground, <laughs> Wombling Free. So we called it the Womble. It was a nutter of a fish. It, it was just like all over the lake. <clears throat> I didn't know what was on. It was just crazy yeah. fish. Um, mid twenties again, but it was just stunning. You know, this little pond, no one fishes it really. Everyone wants Colin. You're left alone over there. Um, and it was just great catching these carp to, to myself. Had it to myself, tell it to myself. It was awesome. Um, it didn't, I, I got told it weren't that hard to catch. You could catch this in the middle of winter. What's this, the lint? Yeah. Yeah. And it loved a white pop up. Well, I've got white nutty ones on. I was like, this is going to happen. This is, this is the one sort of thing. But the way I was fishing for it, like hell, in the edge, really weren't the one. I'm, I've got little traps set, little tigers, little wafters. It's just not the one. For any big fish, it would seem in the same eyes. All you need to do is put a better bait out and fish trolleys over yeah, the top. Okay. Which I was gutted about. I really didn't want to catch that fish like On it. On a little intimate pit. Yeah, so I've fished a bar. Basically, I've seen all these fish come into this corner. There's lily pads, a weed bed, and it's just silkweed right, covering an old silk spot. And I knew by bringing in the trod, I knew that I could fish these trods over the um, uh, siltweed. I've basically put a load of bait out there. Yeah. A bit of hemp in between. And I've gone back to the wall pack and I fished Lake 8 and I had a few fish out of Lake 8. And then when I went straight back there three days later. Done the first night, caught a bream. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was thinking, it's good, it's got to happen. The following morning, it happened. And what a carp. What an, I mean, of all the carp that I've caught from St. Ives, that one, it's so special. It stands out. Even like after lads reading the book have said to me, that's the one, Dave, isn't it? And I was like, yeah, that is such a special carp. Why? The Ivo Lynn, it's just, it's just scales. It's a mega oh, looker. It's, yeah, it's just everything. everything. And it's a bit of a forgotten gem, isn't it? Yeah. 100%. Colin stole the show, unfortunately. Colin was the star oh, of the Colin's show. Colin's a mega carp, Yeah, mate. yeah. It's either you want these old handsome ones or you just want to go and catch a big fish. Which What what, what do you want? In my album, Both. you can see there's a lot of handsome with the river fish. They're all scale, black. You know, that, that's, that yeah. floats my boat every day of the week. There's a lot of big carp out there these days. But if you can go and catch your album full of handsome, you know, good looking fish, I, I think, you know, that's the way I want to go. Definitely. Absolutely, definitely. And they've got some history about them, mate, haven't they? And pedigree. They yeah. ain't just your normal run of the mill fish. Yeah. So, they? them ones from the valley, um, they would have came probably from old man Eggets. Now, Eggets, I think Tim's paid Paisley's yeah. first cart book. That, yeah. that Eggets is in that first. Yeah. And they, they're old leanies in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, they're special old cart. Even waterways, um, the likes of Colin. The likes of the Fully and um, Mutley's in Longreach. Right. They're from Waterways, which is right next door to Vegas. So, you know, they're serious special. Girl. Proper. Yeah. If anyone is a brown, I don't know where the brown come from. I have to ask Gord. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, 
the back onto um sorry, I can't remember what you were <clears> before. You were picking up off the wall pack, weren't you? Yeah. You were at you were eight, seven. Seven. And you you were, you finished off there, didn't you? Seven, um they kind of let me on. Yeah, 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 you said. I had to like catch a few before they realised. Oh, yeah, yeah. Smashed it on Lake Eight. Yeah. Let you on seven. Yeah, yeah. And then you had a segue over to f- unfinished business and St Ives, didn't you? you yeah, said, I kept flitting again. I shouldn't have done, but yeah, I kept flitting. So yeah, back to seven. Um, I think I finished that. Or did I finish from anything that autumn? Yeah, I came back that autumn. Um, uh, August bank holiday, and I found fish. Uh, were not where they were in the spring. Mm. They've moved down into like a deeper area. Uh, and I remember the August bank holiday. I fished the day after that when everyone had gone back to work. Uh, going back into the swim that I pre-baited, I actually managed to catch one called No Name. Right. Uh, it's an original dink. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it hasn't been caught for two years. Yeah. So it's, it's a special one to catch. So straight back on catching like one of the real rare ones. Um, the next one was probably even better. Jim come round the next morning and I had a fish called Triple Row. Uh, yeah, it was yeah, one yeah. he couldn't catch. So it was like, yeah, this is it. I'm on to summer, you know. Yeah. And again, one of the most handsome, sexiest fish I've ever seen. Yeah, there's some stunning oh, fish. It's delicious. Yeah. It is just like free, free linear. Oh, oh, yeah. Blow your mind, fish. So yeah, that autumn, it was like, this is, this is cool. I've caught some really good ones. Albeit. I wouldn't say they're like bit like people say like B team. They weren't B team fish. They were still originals, but they weren't the better originals. Mm. So where I was going with that long wafter trick, I was getting bites. Every time I could go down, I could get a bite. Uh but albeit it weren't the better fish. Um the renowned one in there is obviously Fred. Yeah. Um, Forty pound common comes out once a year. The most overslung carp. It's just the hardest carp in the world to catch. It's just impossible to catch. Uh, and the big Lynn, the big Lynn, you know, one of them old school, slow head Lynn. It's a crazy looking oh, thing, isn't it? It's just mega. It's just absolutely, on my yeah. doorstep, all this is well. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spoil. So, um, yeah, it was all about coming back the following spring and fishing for them. Um, I didn't realise the lake would be busy again. I didn't realise it would get so busy because I hadn't done the spring on there the year before. Oh, yeah, of course you hadn't. No, so I've never known anywhere like it. Coming from the river and fishing the wilds of St. Ives, (laughs) where where you're living under like a patched up brolly, it became like Tempest City. Yeah. And they've all got their, it's like, well, this is really not my, I don't know what this is all about. Claustrophobic. Yeah, never known anything like it. Anyway, they usually set up in the first swim. Closest to the car park, second swim, first swim. And I'd clock this. They don't want to barrel all the way down the other end. Okay. So bless him, a lad before who had loads of fish gave me like a little bit of a hint and I still to this day worship what he'd done for me there. Uh, there was a, f- a swim called the Rat Hole. No one fished it. No one fished it. And he'd been in there the season before absolutely clumping fish out of there. Yeah. So that was like, we'll get in there. But what's, what? But the funniest thing about it was, if someone followed me in there, shoot me up, as you would say, uh, I could fish it from the swim opposite, fish to the same area. Same area, okay. So even though I could get baited, it meant walking around the other side all the way to the, the first, like, miles to go, but I could still keep in the zone and fish for those fish. Um, lo and behold, spring came. Uh, April was always tough on there. It's all Zig City in the April uh, come May, they just put their heads down. The first couple of weeks of May, it's just extraordinary. Open season, yeah, yeah clubbing season. Yeah, you can hear like, that, that May full moon. You could yeah. hear the crickets, you know, you could hear um, hear the owls, you know, it comes round. Game you on. just know, yeah. nature's ready sort of thing. And, uh, yeah, the first proper one I had out of there was Big Tail. At the time, I thought it was Fred. And it had taken me into two wee beds, and like solidly out of the rat hole, it just totally locked me up. I was like, oh no, God, what am I going to do here? I had to get the boat. Because it's such a tiny swim, the rat oh, hole. Yeah, I can't tight. pull the boat through that swim. I've got to go to the swim next door. It's like three o'clock in the morning. Boat all the way around to the swim I'm in. Get back in the boat, play it through the weed. I just remember this big golden common. I was like, yeah, this is quick. I've done Fred already. I was like, this is brilliant. Do you know what I mean? It weren't Fred. It was Big Tail. Another good carp. But yeah, big tail in the bag. Now, Still on these long link wafters? No, I changed the game again. Mm. Changed the game again. I, like I say, those... Why? Because you weren't catching the A-teams. Uh, and you think they were getting away with it? No, I just think they weren't attracted to it. 
Right, okay. It weren't their, it weren't their dinner. They didn't that weren't their plate. They, that, that, it could fool the other ones. I mean, one that hasn't been caught for two years, it's fooling that one, and one that like Jim Shelley couldn't catch. Yeah. It's fooled both of them too. So like for the trickier fish, yeah, it was working. But for for the for the ones you know, sometimes they come out three four times a year. Okay. So they're looking for dinner. They're looking for grass. They're bait fish. So yeah. what I done, I changed it around to like um, I was fishing just like a, a snowman, but fishing it blowback style, right? And fishing it with a PVA bait because I know that they're coming in and they're grubbing on the bait. I could tell. I could see them fizzing every morning. They're coming up to me and they're fizzing every morning. So I know they're eating. They're, they're plowing into the bottom. They're fizzing. Yeah. Try the chod out there. Twice I got done on the chod. Did you see it? You just get that lift. They're done and Nothing, they're away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but they're, they're coming up and they're munching. So I'm putting in bait in bags in front of them and they're picking up the bait. So, yeah, that's how I started catching better originals uh, from the wall pack. We moved away from actually snowmans and put in wafters. So you just got double bottom baits and wafters. Even when it's pups, it's like, no, they don't want to see that. They, they want, don't like it, yeah. They want to pick up the bait. Yeah. And then fluorocarbon lines changed to braid. Because Supple braid or coated? <clears throat> actual braided mainline. Oh, okay. Yeah, coated braided hook lengths, but now you're going big lead and braided mainline. Braided mainline because those fish are so tricky. The first one I ever caught was two bites on the mono, and it well, no, weren't even sorry, not two bites, two bleeps on the bobbin. The bobbin just picked up once, twice like that, and I had to feel the other side of the line, and I could feel it like that searing sensation. Mm. So I lifted the rod up. And I reeled down to where it was, and it had already gone two rod lengths oh. everywhere before. So that's how tricky they were. I remember the, one of the swims I fished, the left rod, I've come from St. Ives, so I'm, I'm expecting like, okay, yeah. did it, did it, did it, yeah. like I've got two bleeps in the night. In the morning, I reeled it, and I've got no lead on. So that's how clever these fish are, you know? They're just pressured, isn't they? Oh, that's just crazy. Fred's, like, the stories I've heard about Fred would just blow your mind. I mean, that... So overslung, it probably sit there all night with with the rig in. You yeah. wouldn't even know. You wouldn't even get like a bite. You wouldn't get nothing back. No, no tell that you've had, had, had that bite. So yeah, so the braided mainline is up in my game now. My bait's working. I'm fishing a different rig, and guess what happened? Woolpack being Woolpack, someone's gone in there. <laughs> no one fishes this bloody swim, and they've gone in there. They had two. They had the saddleback common, which is stunning, and then his mate dropped in straight afterward and have another one. So I was like, oh my God, so that's it. I can't get back in the swim. So I thought, right, okay, no problem. I'll take it. We'll pay the tickets, you know, it's all, you know, it's all game. So I went in the swim opposite. Oh, to fish the same area. Yeah, yeah fish the same area. And it was basically from the rat hole, you cast in out to that side. And from this swim, I'm going left now. So I'm totally opposite from where I am, but I'm still fishing the same area. I didn't bait up. I'd already done the baiting up as such. And all I had to do was cast two PVA bags out because that's all I could get out, my two rods to the left. Yeah, Fishing quite deep down. Um, it was, it's always the wall pack. It's always like three o'clock or something like that. It's crazy time. It was always night bites on seven. Was it? Yeah, always, always night bites on seven. Absolute screaming run. Brilliant fight. Pulled it in and I've uh, got the fully. 32 pound fully scale black. It's one of the most... Of all the mirrors that you'd probably want to catch oh, and brace, the, that would be in with the big lin. My second fish that morning was the big lin. No. Yeah, I braced the big lin at 42. And yeah, I, I, I managed to catch the fully as well at 32. So there before me was a brace. Now today, oh, bless him. It, it let me do the brace shot. I would, but Andy Stafford was not. If I'd done that, I would have lost my ticket, but I would have loved a brace shot, you know. <laughs> Hey, is that the best morning? <clears throat> oh, mate, high as a kite. It's just buzzing. Absolutely buzzing. To, of all the fish to catch, the, the the lin and the fully braced, I couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe it. It just proved that everything I was doing was going towards Who the Who did the pictures of the lin? Uh, my apprentice, the one that stitched me up on the river. Was it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, there you go. My Karma. Days, mate. Yeah, mega. Absolute mega. Yeah, some place, 70, mate, some angle. 73 pound brace down the wall pack. Which is irrelevant of the weight, isn't it? They're just two mega fish, yeah. isn't they? Yeah. To brace them, to catch one of them alone is enough, yeah. but to brace them together, yeah. some morning. Yeah, there. it was great. It was, but yeah. Oh, yeah. It's interesting little changes as well, isn't it? Yeah, I had to change it around, definitely. The pop ups weren't working on that lake. Nah. I've seen a lot bait. of chods as well, yeah. like you say. They wanted bottom baits, definitely. Yeah. I had to change it all around. 
I, was, I never got that riggy on St. Ives. You know, hinge is a hinge. Need, yeah, you, know you I mean? don't but need to do yeah, On like there, it. it's, you've got to change the game. You've got to, they've seen it all. They know. Pressured, isn't it? It's, yeah. As you say, it's small, it's intimate, but it, yeah. the, the microscope's on them all the time, yeah. isn't it? With the anglers that are around them, it's busy. Yeah, they know. They know. But it's a mega network of lakes, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it is. Yeah. And you're still on there, mate. <laughs> Yeah, I'm stuck on five and six. I've got three more to go, but hopefully it'll come true next next year. So let's see what happens. Yeah, just three Angling wise for you, <laughs> right? I mean, I've got a copy of your book right here, mate. You wrote a book on a section of your angling, the river stuff, everything else, some of the chapters we talked about here. What 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 keeps you you focused? You've done a lot. You're in a great area, there's a lot of good lakes, but you've done a lot of angling, you've caught a lot. What what keeps you motivated? What's the focus? What what keeps that drive? Because the river ain't what it used to be. You've done, apart from free, the wool pack, really. Yeah. You've done St. Ives. I know there's the odd fish, but I mean, it's the odd fish. At least. Yeah. Maybe next year. Oh, mate. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's not it's not got the same, how can you say, numbers as, as what it does. Things have changed. What keeps you fresh focused? What? Because you still do it, mate. You still live that life, don't you? Is there any other kind of life to live? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not that side of, of carp. Do you know what I mean? That side of carp fishing where you've done it for that length of time, you've yeah. seen the heyday go and you're you're now, do you know what I mean? It, it, later on, you've done those targets. Do you know what I mean? You've done a lot in that area. Yeah. What what keeps you focused? What's the drive moving forward? Um, I, I don't know anything else. I have to be honest. I don't, I've, I've never been... Um, like a flash car, a big out, it's just, that just doesn't motivate me. And I know money and that's enough. I can't, I can't focus on them things. They're so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so two seconds and they're gone sort of thing. I just lived for my fishing. It's the only, through my whole life, it's the only constant I've ever, ever had. You know, it's I always, get always I get been that. there. Would you sack it off and go Colm Valley? What, to go and cart fish? Yeah. What, to sack off Cambridgeshire? Yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah, why would I not? Yeah. Okay. Cotswolds. Um, I did have a little venture down for the um, uh, uh, the croc. I did have did a you? go. Yeah, but I just got punished by tent. So I was doing something wrong down there. <laughs> it's got it's got Lloyd walked round in the morning and my eyes were like that. And he was like, Dave, why are your lines so tight? Because I was so pissed off with trying to sink them because I had so many tents all yeah. night long. So, um, no, I fished uh, Northampton. I fished Cotswolds. I fished all over this country sort of thing. I fished, uh, the biggest fish I've ever caught, um, Andy Lobel invited me up to Scotland and we fished a lock in Scotland, 150 foot deep sea lock and I caught a 150 pound, um, the big skate. Skate, yeah. So yeah, any- Oban lock, what yeah, you up there? Yeah, any, any sort of, my dad's dragged me out trout fishing, we was perched fishing at Grafham for four or five pound yeah, fish. Yeah, So any- it's just my life. I wouldn't know anything outside it. The only other thing I've really done outside it is is surfing, but there's not that much difference. The weather's got to be right for a big one. <laughs> yeah. Anything water related. I'm a plumber. I live on the water. I love swimming. It's just, I'm just, a, I'm just so. The water boy. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Bobby Boucher. Um, the, yeah. um, the, the sort of writing of the book, mate, a carpus pap. I know we are, well, you're currently, pen in another one man, I am which yeah is pretty epic but yeah, that process that's not a summit everybody can turn their hand out and but, do mate yeah. you obviously throughout your angling and and you talked a chapter about Rich Wilby getting involved and seeing him on the thing and then getting involved in magazine articles and yeah. writing and it being quite natural yeah. the book progression that's a big step from writing articles for a magazine to a book how was that process mate um long hard <laughs> Are you doing it again? So he loved it. <laughs> Don't know why I'm doing it again. Uh, Caroline, like, she was distraught by her. She was like, yeah, sure. yeah I was, uh, I'm I'm on a narrow boat using my phone internet trying to, like, keep up communications with graphic designers. And it, it was just crazy. It was just mad. Um, I've loved uh, literature. I love literature, I suppose. I love reading. Um, e- even at school, um I don't know how this happened because I was, I was quite a bright lad, but I ended up in the bottom group at English because I was a naughty boy. That's what it was. Right. The teacher didn't like me. So I got put to the, the bottom group uh, and all the kids in that group, I loved them. I think they were great. You know, they, they weren't SWATs or anything like that. I, I could gel with them. Okay. But I was a SWAT in disguise and I, I managed to write um, a five page story about um, Fred the Barbarian 
And right. I got told to stand at the front of class and read this story. I think I was only 11, 12 years old. And the class applauded me. So I think I've just naturally always had this gift of writing stories, I suppose. Yeah. Um, reading the Yates books after the passion for angling, reading Casting at the Sun, following into reading Rod's books, just reading these guys that have just captured, you know, captured the fire of carp angling, you know, what it's really all about. It just led to me writing a book. I had to write a book. I mean, Chris, I remember giving a book uh, to Chris Yates and he was like, great title. So, yeah, I've, you know, so that's an accolade in itself, isn't it? I'll take that to the back. <laughs> yeah. Love on a T-shirt, mate. Yeah. Chris Sartness. <laughs> yeah. Come on, lad. Yeah, so, mate, it was just something I always wanted to do and I suppose, yeah. It just what's number to... two then? <clears throat> what's, what, what's in the... Um, a Carpers Path basically captures uh, the fishing on St. Ives and I managed to wangle out two river 30, three, sorry, three river 30s in between. The last chapter's brilliant and the Carpers Path, I think, it's just completely off grid in the sense that we brought a narrow boat in the lockdown and sailed it all the way home. <laughs> like the adventure's unreal. Uh, Caroline got covered in... <laughs> engine base uh, yeah I've seen that photo yeah it's, it's just great the story's brilliant and you then, basically lost your ads in lockdown that's yeah. alright mate we've all done that yeah, it was great but we was on a narrow boat driving home yeah it's cool it mate. was just yeah it was great um, getting it back to that marina then fishing that marina and catching another two river 30s that's the final chapter um, but in between was like my time on St Ives and uh, and and the Woolpack fish. Um, St. Ives, I never realised, for all those fish, I managed to catch the biggest out of the second drove, the biggest out of the lagoon. I caught the second biggest and the first biggest out of the shallow pit. I caught the biggest common, which is the Longreach common. I caught the biggest mirror out of Longreach, as well as loads of other fish. And then I finished it with the round brown, uh, which was the biggest fish in the meadows at the time. Um, and it only took me four years and three months. Jesus. With three... With river, two river thirties in between that as well, I'll catch some river thirties. Oh, and a wall pack lake record as well. <laughs> That's why I had to write about it. I had to get it in the book. I must forget about it. <laughs> Would you? <laughs> yeah. Get old these days. Forget about it. Too much lager. Mate, you've done some, haven't you, boy? Yeah, I had to get it written. So that was another drive. I had to get it written. So the next book, um, you know, I've missed out my childhood, which we've talked a little bit about today. Other lakes, I've got um, like the biggest from a few different lakes as through my twenties, which was a struggle with the plumbing business and yeah. family and everything. Um, and then, obviously, I'd love people have asked about river carping. I've I've seen people, young lads on social media. There's no book out there that's broke it down that's really gave you know what you should be doing. It's sort of a <clears> bit <throat> of a secret, isn't it, in terms yeah. of the aspects? There ain't a technical. Yeah. Blow yeah. by blow. So, is there? Yeah, I was going to dedicate three chapters to River Carping. Like, mm. Lay it all out there. Um, and then uh, the Bull Pack 5 6, which has been such a tough one. Um, and I'm, I might be uh, putting it out there, but I've been renowned for like going for places where I should be. <laughs> There's one mega one you sent me a picture of. Mate. Yeah, so that was um, last spring. Was that last spring? That was last spring, yeah. What a fish. Yeah, so there's some um, guesty type um, stories. How did you find out? Did you know about mm -hmm. that one, no? Um, it was kind of like putting two and two together. A couple of lads have been, um, right. two of them actually got caught. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, mm -hmm. but they were uh, different lakes. But this set of lakes is all in the same sort of area. And luckily enough, where I moved the narrowboat to, um, it wasn't far from the narrowboat. Okay. Be it, you could only get to it by boat. You, you couldn't walk there. If you was no. going to walk there, you would have to walk crazy three miles through hedgerows, overgrown swamps, marsh. It was, you know, it was like a separated island. It had river all the way around it. So being on the narrow boat, all I had to do is go out the entrance of the marina. I had to go downstream. <laughs> nice. Through a little uh, channel, off, like an off channel, and then venture in through, oh, mate, it, it started off with willows because the willows grow by the riverside. Okay. And then... It must have been a good 40 foot of Norfolk reed. What, are you just going through it? Yeah, but I had to like just plough through it. <laughs> First time I went over, I was just jogging bottoms and a jacket. Oh, God. Um, I'd like to say it was late March. It was probably late March. Now, I knew the lake. I knew its location in the valley. I knew that the river flooded in, so there was always an opportunity that fish could get in because it flooded. Yeah. So that's a good start. But for me, I needed to see carp. Otherwise, I was, you know, it's a waste of time. 
So I got over to the lake. It was grey, freezing cold, early March. And um, lo and behold, I was standing in the lake after I've marched through all these reeds, soaked up to above my knees. Mm. Within five minutes, a carp leapt out. I remember getting on the phone to Caroline. I was like, yeah, this is game on. I've seen one sort of thing. Now, I only baited the front margin where I'd got to. Yeah. Um, because it's on a nature reserve. I don't know who's about. I didn't know who could be lurking around. didn't have a clue. Later on, I found no one went over there. No one. I had the place to myself. So I, I built up courage to move around the lake, but straight away, all I could do is bait where, where I'd sort of landed. Um, backwards and forwards to the boat for two weeks, baiting it up. Now, how would you go about it? How would you go about a lake which no one fishes, no one has fished for bloody years, you don't know if there's fish in there, so you probably need to put an assortment in. So I've made an assortment of mix, crushed boily, uh, particles, all that sort of jive, just to get a bite, you know, to see what's in there. Um, I didn't realise I was doing it wrong until the first time I night fished it. Two rods, you know, me poked out high up above the reeds. An otter, about oh. two hours into dark, came up and popped its head up and it's just looking straight at me. I was like, oh, no, this ain't no good. All right, thing. mate. Yeah, so. How are you getting on? Obviously, I was <laughs> going to be there. It's there, it's there yeah. and now they're in the valley. They're up and down it. So I, that was something I'd have to uh, work out. Um, and again, is there more than one cop? Thankfully, that following morning, it was like, you know, I've been spooked off, but something to keep me there. There was a bar over to my right. And this carp's just launched out in the morning on the bar. And it was a big black mm. fish that's all i remember it's just the blackness of it i was like oh, right that's it anyway with this going backwards and forwards with my inflatable <laughs> yeah i kept snapping the norfolk reed and catching it on a uh, uh, blackthorn and hawthorn going through the trees to get back to the boat um back on the boat being a plumber i'll just get a bit of silicone and patch it up with right. a bit of silicone um, and obviously going through all the rock, the, the reeds, the, I had to wear waders to go, otherwise I'd just be yep. soaked every day. Um, it's got to about early March and, uh, sorry, early April. It's got to early April and I'm going backwards and forwards. I'm probably doing one night, two nights a week over on this lake. But I'm also baiting up the river off, off, off the front of the boat. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I've gone back over there. I'm hiding under a tarpaulin all night because I'm scared that someone might see me. I've, I'm snapping these Norfolk reeds and they're tearing the bottom because they're sharp when it snaps. Anyway, I've paddled back. It's late evening. I've got back. I've placed the bucket of bait that I used over on the lake on um, on that boat. Said to Caroline, I'm just going to go and bait the swim up. <sighs> I'm paddling probably about 60 yards. I've got 30, 40 yards towards where I'm baiting the river. Oh, no. And the inflatable has just gone bang like that. It's just ate me up like a cactus, uh, the fly trap. Ate me up like a fly trap. Pulled me down under the river. Oh, no, mate. I've got my waders on and I'm panicking now. I'm scared. Now, I've, I've done a lot of surfing now, and I've been caught in rips and I've been pulled out. So I know, like, in that moment, you're on your own. I haven't got a life jacket on, which is really bad, I know. But I'm camoed up. So I don't want to get seen. I'm camo. I've got camo all over my, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a hoodie and basically I'm under the water and all I've got is just water around like this. Lucky enough, do you remember Dave Lane done a video saying about putting your toes up in the waders? And yeah, it just yeah, came yeah, to me. Yeah. It was about a week before I'd seen it in the shop. I'd seen it on the TV in the shop. Managed to put my toes up, managed to grab a bait box and grab the paddle and just pull it close to me yeah and i managed just to as soon as i go to tread water i'm sinking but if i kept my toes up you get up enough i had to kind of like flip my way back 40 yards caroline's stressing she see me now bloody hell. i'm almost drowned trying to catch these bloody carp didn't i yeah um i had some savings from the book so we we went out straight away and I brought a big boat. <laughs> right, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, first yeah. investment. Yeah, always make sure you've got a life jacket and if you're doing something like that, make sure you're not in a flight book because it's, not, it's just not going to be up for the job sort of thing. So this is a great start. Otters, almost yeah, drowned. Oh, oh. <laughs> um, but now I've got a big boat. So now I can actually get my bed chair in, I can get a brolly in, I can, you know, get over there, I can get about the actual lake and I can hide away. Uh, the big boat was the lifesaver. It really was mm. because now I can get all the way around the lake and I can actually find carp. And I'm a bit more confident as I've not seen anyone over there. The place looks totally prehistoric anyway. 
It's just like it's so overgrown. It's been left alone for over a decade. You'd see something, wouldn't you? If yeah. People going around there. Yeah. All there. All I remember is cormorants up in the trees, Canadian geese on the islands. Yeah. And then you've got otters like the Norfolk Reed. It's just surrounded alive by live of them. They're just alive with otters. Yeah, absolutely alive. They weren't. They ain't bothered by you either, no. are they? You were saying. Now, one night I remember waking up. Um, there's a fallen tree, and I'm sleeping against a fallen tree. I've got the brolly, and I'm it's open fronted. And I've shined the light on it, and it's it's sussing me out. They they open their nose to suss you out. They want to suss you out, and they they do that. So you're either um, predator or prey, prey. Yeah, and that's what they're doing. So it's looking at me. I've got my light on it, and it's sussing out. Should I eat it or should I run? That's what it's doing. It's looking at me like that. It's a bit daunting in the dark. Fancy your chances if it came at you. I can have these. Do you know what I mean? Yandy, wouldn't you? <laughs> Oh, no. Smack it with a copy of your book. Yeah. Walla! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no good in a boat, but it might be good at good at fighting. <laughs> um, yeah, where do I get to? So, yeah, um, back to fish in the lake. I've now got the big, I can move about. I found um, the first group of fish uh, in a shallower area in the weed on a nice, sort of sunny May morning. And, um, there was two good, really good fish. I managed to get right up to them and actually film them. You know, I was almost on top of them. They weren't bothered the by because of the weed, you reckon? I think during the night they're out in the lake and they're worried and they're escaping the otter. During the day with the sun up, the otter's not about during the day. It's only like a night hunter, so it can now go, they can now go and bask in the weed and have the place to themselves. So they're, they're quite relaxed during the day. Albeit, I can't catch them in thick weed. So all I was doing is find a clear bit on the shelf next to the weed. And now this is what I figured out when I'm baiting it with particles, broken baits and stuff like that. It's because it's, it's uh, connected to the river. It's attracting in um, silverfish, which in turn attracted the otter. So every time I saw a pike in the evening go through the swim, I knew the otter would turn up that night and it did. So now I had to change the bait game and I changed it over to tigers and big lumps of rock salt. Because right. when you're fishing a lake like that, where those carp have never seen rock salt, that's just like honey. That's like just giving them honey. And you're the only one putting it in. Yeah, and now I've got a spot where I'll come back to next week and it's, it's salted, it's ready to go. And the tigers, they're going to stick around. They're not going to get eaten by the silverfish. So, yeah, back there, I caught my first one, sort of mid, mid-May, 25-pounder. Um, mate, I, I don't think it had been hooked because it All just right. carried on feeding with the bait. Yeah, it was like the lime was going, dun, 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 dun. it wasn't even pulling. It just carried feeding on the spot. I don't think it's ever been hooked. That's mad, isn't it? Classic looking river common, you know, Cambridgeshire common, classic looking, uh, 25 pound, great start. I was over the moon. But it was, catching that first one was like, no one's fished this place for years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All of a sudden, this is this, no one knew what I was doing except for Caroline and Tetley. So yes, this was like, this is magic. No one knows what I'm up to. I'm over here catching these carp. It's just like, what a buzz. It's a bit of that river again, isn't it? Yeah. So it's just a different buzz. It's just like, oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, persevered. Uh, I, I didn't catch another one from that spot near the weed, but I started to find them in, um, in the, in the evening when I went over there to fish, they kept going to this shallow bar, right? You could literally park the boat on top of the bar if you wanted to, but there was a little, uh, willow, which I could get round the back and just poke two rods. The rest of it was like Norfolk Reed, tall Norfolk Reed. So I could just poke two little uh, rods out and hide the boat under the... Right, stash it. Yeah, yeah so it was hidden away nicely and I could fish out to that bar. Um, there was a real crap weed around the top of the bar, but down one side of it, there was probably two spots about that big. So, yeah, sweet, two spots, two rigs. That was, that's, that'll be the start. I started with tigers and salt. Um, I fished that area for a month. And it, mate, it went from being like that to like two, Massive. three, four dustbins. It was huge by the time I finished with it. Um, going around every day now, I was a lot more confident. I hadn't seen anyone that's in wildlife. There was nothing else going on over there. Um, and I saw the same group of fish. And it was becoming obvious there was nothing else in there. That's all there is. Except these five commons. There was no mirrors. There was no mirrors at all. Um, I saw bream and I saw common carp. When I started fishing other places, I noticed that the bream and the commons never used to get touched. The otters seemed to like the mirrors with that juicy bit. Okay. So I can understand. And a couple of other mates have came to the same conclusion. These 
big left alone wild pits, you know, the commons and the bream, left. that sort of seems to be left. So yeah. we're thinking that they just, with the scales or the smell of them, because they, they hunt by smell. So maybe it's just not their, the mirror is like a sweeter smelling or something. And that's what they're hunting for. So this whole lake I've got to myself is only five commons in this lake. Um, by sort of uh, beginning of July, I'd had another one of 27 pound. Um, and I'd had another one of 20, 25 again. I think it's two 25s and a, a 27. Uh, the 27 was mega. It's just yeah. like one of them old, looked look like just I'm out of the ball pack, you know, old, yeah, cool car. Um, now, the bar apparently been the place to fish because I'm getting bites now. I'm catching carp, and um, every time I got over there, there was this one fish, and I'm going to assume it was the f- black one that I saw jump, jump out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I'd always see that same group of fish. The black one weren't far away, but it was always, always on its own. And when it didn't matter, when I came to the lake and paddled over to the bar, if I was this side of the bar, it'd be that side of the bar. If I was that side of the bar, it'd be this side of the bar. And it would just swim sideways against the boat at looking at me. And I, I was like, you're a sly old bugger. Yeah. I know what you're up to. You know what I'm up to. You know, you, you're watching me. This is your environment. This is your home. You know. You know what I'm up to. So I had to persevere now for this black common. It was big as well. It, for, for, for somewhere that's altered and left alone. Yeah, yeah. It was a big fish. The, I knew how big it was because the next fish I caught Oh, mate, I fished over this bar and this fish just went absolutely mental. It was about five, six o'clock in the morning. This rip from from hell, just one tone off, falling out of the brolly, clambered over the boat. The rod's just like pulling the reeds like it's just absolutely peeling off. It's gone right round the willow. But when I picked up the rod, it decided to just turn around immediately and like just leap over the bar like a salmon. And it was just mental. It was up and down, left and right. And then it's trying to go in the reeds in front of me. And I was like, oh, my God, what is this? It wasn't the black one because I could see it weren't black on the back. Right. It was just this huge saddle-backed, like, wide wrist, deep-bodied, overslung, it, 35 pound of just yeah, uncaught, Megan, mega. unknown. Oh, Stuff of dreams, isn't it? Blown away. I wasn't expecting that. I think oh. I'd seen it, but I hadn't put two and two together until I got on the bank and lifted it. You don't know when you see him, though, do you? It's just, just something else. Just a mega cart. Mega cart. All that, like, wishing and hoping and is there anything in there, it just suddenly, you know, just became... That's a buzz, mate, yeah. isn't it? But it was that black one. I couldn't give up until I had that black one. Uh, it was really hot that year, do you remember? Absolutely sweltering hot. Yeah, I do remember. Yeah, early though. I was out it? fishing while you lot were working away sweating. <laughs> yeah, I remember it being hot early, wasn't it? Really hot, really hot. Um, getting in that boat and getting all camoed up and paddling up there. I just remember getting there absolutely sweating. A load of northerly winds for ages as well, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, crazy year, crazy year, crazy year, whatever. And um, it was so hot. I remember I had to strip off as soon as I got to the um, uh, the brolly, take me hat off, take everything off. I was just sweating. I remember phoning Tet and I'm on the phone to Tet and I was like, oh, I've just looked over my brolly and there's um, someone has walked through the reeds up to my brolly. Oh, God. And I'm like, oh, no, Tet. He was like, get out of there. <laughs> the guardian of the lake has found you. And I was like, no, 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 I've got to catch this. I said, look, mate, look. I've blanked the last two weeks, right? If I blank again, that's it. I'm going to give up. If I catch that black common, that's it. I'm going to give up. It's done. Whatever. I'm, I can't, I'm sweating. I've, it's been a right mission to get over here. I'm, this is it. I'm doing another night. I ain't going nowhere. Yeah. Six o'clock in the morning, it's rattled off. And unbelievably, it's the black common. Um, my Cotswold mat must be yay big. Yeah, proper. Yeah. I've dropped it on the mat and it's as almost as long as the mat. Jeez. I've got like photos of it down by the big boat. It's almost as long as the big boat. Huge black back common. Just like, oh, incredible. Absolutely incredible. I was just blown away. I'm blown away because all the years of fishing the river and catching what I've known, to see it, you know, the valley change with floods, to see it change with predation, you know, all the big fish in the valley, uh, have been lost to uh, otters, you know, the big common in the Button Lake, 
um, Slavery, Big Girl, um, Colin, unfortunately. So it's for me to go into the valley, find this unknown lake, one, one that doesn't ever get fished, to be able to fish somewhere like that and still catch creatures, lost creatures, black, com- oh, I mean. The, How big was that? It was 38 pounds. Which just means well to me that they're, they're still out there in places, still yeah, hiding away, do, yeah. still yeah, still going, yeah. So to me, that was just like a slice of magic. It really was. You've done some boy. I'm looking forward to book two, boy. That's <laughs> going to be a one, mate. And I can't thank you enough, mate, for coming in. Genuinely, it's been Pleasure. unbelievable thank to hear you from you. So much for everything. Um, before I let you go, yeah, got some quick fire questions, mate. Oh, crazy! If you don't know what's coming up. Oh no, this will be good. Uh, right. Uh, what do you take in a River Forty or a Big Pit Seventy? Oh, River Forty all day long. You just forget a British record. Who wants one? Um, three celebrities you'd take fishing and why? Um, they can be past or present. Uh, oh, crikey! I only know fishing celebs. I'm not. You sad. can have fishing celebs. Every Yatesy, Hutchie, definitely, um, and probably Richard Walker. Yeah. Can you imagine that <sighs> down the pub? That'd be Go great. on then, boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah fair play. Yeah. I uh, think Hutchie would outfish them all. Oh, yeah, mate. You reckon? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Rod Hunter. <laughs> Drum and bass or country and western? I'm a country boy these days, I'm afraid, yeah. I love, man yeah, yeah, I love the old banjo. I played a banjo anyway, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I do, mate, yeah. Oh, I could have gone for a freestyle, yeah. couldn't we? <laughs> Imagine. Yeah, I love the country. I love the country pubs, love live music, so yeah, that's me all, now, all day long now, yeah. I respect that. Paid uh, away. Uh, biggest load of rubbish in cart fishing? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Here we go, mate. Here we go. Oh, my God. We've been very kind. Oh, uh, shoot me for it. I'm going gonna, gonna to be respectful and not this anyone. Um, or, so I'm not going to do a product. What is probably the worst thing? Otters. There you go. Worst thing. Got out on the technicality. Well done. Yeah, um, yeah. One angler to catch a carp to save your life. Who are you picking? Dave Lane. Oh, good pick. Um, one river to fish for the rest of your life. Oh, crikey. You spank the ooze. You can't be that. <laughs> spank the life out of it. Uh, one river. Um, <clears throat> probably the Ebro now. Would it? Yeah, it's going to be the Ebro. I'm going to get over there some point, definitely. Yeah. Watch out the Ebro. Yeah. Um, history carp you wish you'd caught? <sighs> the Black Pig of St. Ives. Is it, was it the Black Pig you'd take that? I wish I caught yours? the Black Pig of St. Ives. Failing that, um, I missed out on fishing Fen, so probably um, the client out of Fen. Oh, the client was a mega one. Um, I'd never turn Mary down. Mary's just, just. I mean, those pictures are tell and all of that's just cool. absolutely epic. But yeah, right up there, it's got to be the Black Mirror, isn't it? How can you send down the Black Mirror? It's a bit of you. Yeah. Isn't it? yeah. Final question, mate. Night in, uh, night out on the bank or a night in with the missus? These days, it's taken me 40 years to find it's going to have to be with my darling Caroline. <laughs> Technically, you'll buy on the bank anyway, aren't you? Yeah, so you find your weather right out the back, yeah. <laughs> Dave, you're a legend. Hey, thank you guys for watching and listening. I'll be back soon with another podcast. Until then, Dave Little, thank you so much, mate. Been a blast. <laughs>